Well, hi everybody. Uh, it's time to start this uh, stream. Uh, we're not totally ready, but we're getting there. So let's go meet the guys. Ta-da! All right, here we got Joss Koss. Joss Koss. And Patrick. Master Patrick Tate. <laughs> yeah. So we're in the shop, in my shop. This is going to be very cool, very cool. I'm glad you guys could make it. So we're going to, we're running late. So we're going to cut out the piece for start this uh, project. And uh, while I'm doing that, uh, the guys are going to entertain you. Joss has stuff, nice stuff to show. Oh, yeah. yeah, we should. Uh, so I'll, I'll give uh, Patrick the camera okay. and Josh can show us his stuff. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I brought some random uh, goodies. This nine pound armory hammer it might seem a little overkill because it is. Uh, here's my thin buckets of hammers. Uh, this is a long story. I don't know where to start on this one. This seems like Patrick, do you have an elevator pitch for this process? I've An elevator pitch. That. Okay, so a lot of people talk about raising helmets. Traditionally, people think about it today as angle raising. There is another process where you actually start out with heavy plate to do some of this stuff. So Josh has been playing with this process for a few years now. All of these started out as half-inch thick plate, I believe. And then with sledgehammers and time and... Uh, Occasionally a power hammer, I think, for some of them, he was able to get this kind of depth out of half-inch plate and starting blades. And final thickness of what should be in the range for armor. So around 1 8th, 1 16th to 1 8th in that range. There's a lot of variability because of the nature of the process. But uh, these The video is sideways. Good to know. Okay, so we're going to have to keep it oriented like this. Thank you. How's the audio, though? <laughs> is the audio good okay here i'm gonna peek down in his bucket so those two that i showed you guys up there those were done on the power hammer using a starting circle nine inches in diameter of half inch plate uh the half inch i almost want to draw you a little picture <laughs> <Where are we? laughs> now here's the very in process one this is what we've been doing all with strikers by hand. The interior texture with strikers is amazing. This is what we want to see. But you can see right now, this is going to be the same depth as this. So while its footprint is maintained, you can see the edge thickness is around 1 8 or a little under. But the center down here is closer to 3 8 in thickness. So by the time we just hammer that 3 8 thinner, this all started as half inch, remember. By the time we hammer all this thickness out, going to grow to hopefully around that height at the same footprint. So that should be exciting. We've been doing that one all by hand. You are incredible. <laughs> There's a comment. That's so you feel the thickness distribution on there. Right? That doesn't come across in the video. <laughs> this is like, that's what you want, right? And then that is saving that for later. So around 0.3 inches in the center. Serious so. shit, guys. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> it's your stream. Yeah. This is your video. This yeah. is this is one that we did with the guys, all with sledgehammers. Again, a pile of sledgehammers. We get three guys going at a time. Uh, and look at the inside texture on this one. This I have a sneaky little forge braze in there, but the inside texture yep. is like I was liking that. Yeah. I popped a thin spot there because, like I said. Uh, you get variability. <laughs> yeah, we're still kind of hack amateurs at some of this. And if you look at the thickness data on the originals, they're not that much better. <laughs> they're not that much better than this. They're like close to uh, Hey guys, for the tail, for the Yamet uh, tail, uh, are you comfortable with the uh, four inch one? Yeah. I mean, sure. Be enough sure. Material. Yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. Okay, you can carry on. <laughs> Thank you. We pretty much covered it there, right? Well, I guess stretch raising is not exclusive with angle raising as well, right? Like, yeah. 
This uh, salad so, here that you can kind of see it's coming out in the salad. Yeah. It was stretch raised to like exactly this size and shape. And then from there, it did a little bit of fine tuning in the stretching and then started angle raising in the normal ways. This might be the time where you explain this. Nah, probably not uh, in this maybe, video. Maybe not in this the, video. The, yeah, we'll go more into different types of raising in another video. This today, on the way here. today is kind of a really impromptu. We weren't sure if we would even be able to come visit, but we have managed to come up and then I get hijacked into doing some, some work. It happens, yeah. that's okay. Well, we a, are all in rush rush mode. You're a high value commodity around here apparently. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions because we can see the comments and we will add to it. So I'm going to show off this hammer real quick because this is a beautiful hammer. Yeah, correct. See, look at that. That's a beautiful hammer. Yes, oh. that one is based on an illumination from the 15th century that shows the stretch the, raising process. They want to see which armette we're doing. Is oh. that on the screen still? Is that going to get weird if you video the screen? Or did they oh, we'll see. see. We'll see what happens. We've got it on the computer screen. We'll show the armette that this will be styled it's after. B1 from the Mandula Collection. So B1 from that. Mantova, if you couldn't hear him. So there's our future Armet. There you go. Well, we're, you know, we're basically, uh, we're, we're gonna get inspired by it, but it won't be an exact replica. So that's what we're generically aiming for. So, all right, so. Uh, okay, so who is this question posed to? How long have you been doing this to get this good? So who is this question directed at? There's three of us hacks standing around pretending like we know what we're doing. <laughs> well, Coffee break. This is my dog mug. <laughs> okay, this starting plate is point, point oh eight one. Yeah, point zero eight. And the material is 4130? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to pan yeah. around the shop here. Do you want me to move my bucket there? Okay. This is a beautiful place. It really is nice. It's open and airy. Okay, Eric, how long have you been hammering on metal armor stuff? I started uh, way back in 87. Uh, it's, it started just because I wanted an armor. I, I was getting my first apartment. I left the house, you know, my parents' house, and I wanted an armor in my living room. And that's how all of this started. I realized right away we couldn't find armor on the corner streets. So uh, I decided to try to make one. My dad had a little forge in the back of the house because he's a wood cabinet maker. And he was the forge some carving tool for fun, but he never really get, got into it. But me and I discovered I love pushing metal with a hammer. I use his forge and his uh, anvil still. That's the anvil he was using. That's like almost 40 years ago. Nice. And uh, from there, I just fell in love with armor making. Then I discovered the SCA. And I said, wait a minute, you wear armor and you <laughs> fight in it? Oh my God, I want an armor and I want to fight it. So I made myself an armor and I got into the SCA. And then somebody at the SCA said, hey, if I give you money, are you going to make me an armor? So a little while. He's been playing a little while. How about you, Josh? When did you start tinkering and playing with this stuff? I think for me it was 2009, so a little bit more recently. Hey guys, you want to go on that side? Because when I started, oh, yeah. oh he's, he's gonna make noise. Nothing. He's gonna cut with a bandsaw, so it's gonna get a little noisy. 4130, you source from where? Uh, I got it, it's imported from California. I imported where, from California, we'll have to get uh, back to people on sourcing. The, the, ca the company is called uh, Castle. They have, a, they have a, a, a shop up in Montreal, but they're based in, two, in California. Okay. I don't know what kind of work they do though. Yeah. He's locking us in so to quiet the quiet room. Now. 
Okay, I guess people want to hear about me a little bit, maybe. Let's I'm the only one over. hasn't. The elusive okay. but legendary <laughs> and chronically overhyped. <laughs> yes, chronically overhyped. Uh, I started tinkering with metal, you know, at the age of 12 or 13. I started playing with knife making, met a guy that was doing some of that. And so I was tinkering and playing. Later on in 1998 is when I met a guy when I was living in Germany that was making armor. Uh, just cheaper SCA stuff and Renfair trinket kind of stuff. And so I started playing with that guy. Um, worked on and off with him for about a year while I was hopping around Europe and traveling and seeing other stuff. I guess he'd have to lock us in. <laughs> <laughs> make it any oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's but a great backdrop that, as well. Uh, after that, I got into a few other things. And then about 2000, I started making armor full-time for SCA and other people. And I did that for about seven years full-time. And then uh, got into architectural line work. So I've only tinkered and played with it since 2007, I guess. Uh, every once in a while, somebody says, hey, you should do something. And if it's interesting or pays well enough, then yeah, okay, I'll entertain the idea. Um, oh, yeah. I ended up here in Canada just kind of as an on aside, vacation. I got hijacked <laughs> to help with the project and some architectural stuff. And we weren't sure if we were going to even get out here to see Eric. I thought he was cutting with a bandsaw. But uh, I guess this is originally the plan, but this will work too. Oh, yeah. No, it's been in the backdrop cinematic. the entire time. <laughs> Very cinematic. But uh, I guess it works. Yeah. We... Yeah. So uh, yesterday evening, we realized we would get wrapped up and buzzed Eric to see if we could come visit. He was like, yeah, let's do a live stream. <laughs> Make an Armet. Let's raise an Armet tomorrow. I need to raise an Armet. So, yeah, that's how we ended up here. Yeah, we're going to find out how that goes shortly. <laughs> After 60 hours of work, and this is his uh, day off. <laughs> See what you got left in you. <laughs> I've got faith. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> we will roll with it. We'll yeah. We're, we're going to look around his little store. Oh, yeah. Well, and I kind of want to show the here, view I'm out back here. It's beautiful. There's like, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a valley with like a creek and a forest. And it's just a very picturesque spot he's got here. We're, we're Less so, hiding in the back room. Piece. Yeah, he's got a lot of those kicking around. Yeah. Just raised aluminum. Yeah. Very cool. What's that hard hat? Is that aluminum or is that just painted plastic? Uh, I know that there are great hard hats made with aluminum for a while, but I don't know. I made my own hard hat out of aluminum yeah. one time and... Made in China. Okay, out of aluminum though, it looks like. That's cool. I've seen these where people have taken them and represent them. Like, oh yeah? That's classy. Yeah. I wonder if that's CSA approved. Whoa, check out this bar clamp. Heck yeah. Whoa, I gotta get me one of those. Look at the throat on that if you got a solid plate fab table. Hmm. I wonder if we can come out now. Is it safe? Can we come out? Any mm. other questions? Oh, you, you uh, gotta... do you have a Patreon? Hmm. Nope, time to get to work. I'm not sure. Seems like I the mean, kind of thing Eric might have. It's one of those, we're all open to donations. It's just a matter of figuring out how all of the technology works. Yeah. No, oh, now he's using bandsaw. Oh, there you go. Clean up on the bandsaw. That's probably quieter though, eh? We're, should we creep back in? Maybe. Let us know if it's too loud. I'll try and look at the comments. Oh, yeah. More aluminum helmets here. Can you guys hear us at all now, or is it just the whine of the machines? This is a nice looking salad. Very nice. Oh, and all the conical helms which have found their way into frame. What else do we got? He's already done a good pan around the shop. Or steel for practice. Well, I think aluminum is very soft. It is a bit tricky to anneal. But it's a perfectly good way to practice the process, I think. Again, not sure if you guys can hear me at all over that wine, but 
We'll retreat back into the quiet room where it also smells nicer. Yeah, it was a little loud. What was it about aluminum? Uh, this guy wants to know, you, so. would you suggest using aluminum or steel for practice? It depends on what you're trying to make. For just practicing angle raising in general, aluminum's not bad because you can anneal it and you can move it quite a ways. You don't have to have a lot of high-tech equipment. I say high-tech. I mean, you don't have to have a big torch. You can use a plumber's torch even to anneal the aluminum. Right. So it's convenient in that sense. But it is going to... You're going to have different things that you can do with a hot piece of steel that you can't really yeah. do with the aluminum as well. One of the things you're going to show us today... Yeah. Little, <laughs> is that hot raising is actually quite different than cold raising in terms of technique, or it can be. Well, it can be. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I think, even with hot raising, raise concentric yeah, circles. Yeah, because they're borrowing the technique do. from cold but work. Exactly. But, they're borrowing it from silversmiths and coppersmiths. But this is a guy who knows about the possibilities allowed by hot work and raising. <laughs> and I learned that by experimentation. Yeah. Not having anybody tell me, no, you can't do that. So it's like, okay, well, we're going to try something stupid and weird and see if we break it. Yeah. When oh. we break it, we know not to do that quite like that. Yeah. We try some other way to break it. <laughs> Might be considered vaguely heretical, but... Ooh, that's better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, probably we're going to zip the edges of that real quick. And then we're off to the races, I think. I have no idea. Maybe do your warm-up stretches. <laughs> warm-up Mountain Dew. Yeah. I have never been here. I have never used any of these tools. And they're wanting me to raise something that... But you got everything you need, which is this raising hammer yes. and this ball. Let's take a look at the face on that helmet because th on that hammer because this is like a common modification for armoring with a ball peen hammer that is extremely useful. You could do ninety percent of all armor almost with this ball peen slightly reground to a slightly crowned face with rounded edges. Oh, he says we should make a Sauron helmet. Do you think you have time for that today? Knock out a quick Sauron helmet. I don't know that. <laughs> this is one Eric says he likes crazy as well. Yeah, he, that's more textbook. He's gotten to use these more things. Um, but yeah, this you might have to see more in Coppersmith and Silver You see pictures of these kind of showing in old armoring. Yeah, and they have their applications for sure. Especially when you have to reach down to do some work from the inside. But that's more my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. As you get older, you know this is things, you know, when you're younger, you're powerful and the world's yours. But when you're Yeah. 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 When you really need it to move. Yeah, and you know, you, you do a great job with these too. I mean, in the end, it's not the tool, it's the guy handling it. I do seem to recall you saying. If you look, just look at the collection of hammers. It's not, there's not hundreds of hammers or even dozens of hammers. This, there are some this, that make you ask, what's this, this one? one? I'm curious to hear what the story is with this one. This one was bought in an antique store in France by Georges Jamieux. Oh. I was with him. And I said, you lucky bastard. You look a nice hammer. And he was, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> when, I got, when I got back from France, maybe a month later, I got most of the hair. Oh, that's nice. And it's really nice when you have the little details and really deep. This one I use a lot. That really? One, I don't use that much. But like I said, these one are the, my main hands. This is the, the, the bread and butter. And there's nothing really uh, 
special. Oh, object. that's an interesting, like a straight peen cross peen, very mm -hmm. narrow. This one too. Oh, really? When I want to do flanging, you know. Uh, okay. And that, it looks like a blacksmith set fuller. Yeah, it is. One of the things I noticed when I was first learning, I, I thought I needed specialized hammers for so many different things. I needed some hammers, long neck ones like that. Now they sit in a corner shove. I've made a lot of those I too. Occasionally, <laughs> one or two blows, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of my weirder ones I brought from home that more uh, fit with this process are these long guys of different weights and lengths actually do come in handy when you start doing this kind of weirder process. Yeah, I do have some, uh, I got this one. <coughs> when I have to uh, yeah. work the shape of a raised one, you know. You yeah, you have to from the inside, or, like, bump it out a little bit. Down yeah. So this one I forged at the Montreal Forge. Okay. They let me use their big beast. They got oh, the hammer. The Beche, yeah. Yeah, it's like a 300 weight or something. It's crazy, man. Yeah, they don't want to let people use that, I'm told. You're special. <laughs> yeah. That was a great experience. I use this one too, but like I said, these are the main. Yeah, the long ones like that, that's the kind of one that maybe you don't use it very often, but when you need it, you really need it. <laughs> you get some uh, grinder dust in there? <laughs> oh, yep. All right, so uh, Ooh, this, here we are. This is what we're starting with. So you said that was 16 inch diameter? Yeah. Okay. You wanna, you wanna scratch it with a punch and keep that line? I oh, don't know, yeah, you don't need that. Oh, no. The force is strong with this one. <laughs> this is interesting, huh? I haven't made an arm yet now. It'll be a nice handle there. How long did you say it's been for you, Eric? It's been years. So it's been like five years, no, more than that, six years, I think, that the last arm. And then I wasn't that satisfied with it. See, I bet it's been 12 or 15 years since I've made one. Yeah, but you're a Patrick Tatum, man. <laughs> I was saying this once. So it's a long time ago, a long time ago, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I want to just say Patrick was the first guy making armor, real nice armor, who actually answered my question when I started out. Well, I always I was already started out in, in around 2003, 2002 to 2003, and he would answer all my pesky question. And well, thank you very much for that, Patrick. This is we've been trying. We started talking maybe in 2003. You said. Yeah. That was the first time we've met each other. So it's been a while. We've tried to get together multiple times. I mean, some of you guys may have seen us trying to uh, conspire to raise some funds to have something like this, but it was going to be more planned and thought out and prepared for. Yeah. This is very much just impromptu, let's get together, let's pound on some metal, see what happens. He's got an Armette project he was needing to start anyway, so that's why it's like, okay, well let's try something. So, I mean, you kind of calculated the diameter of this blank based on over the head measurement? Yes, and I, I talked with some other guys, like Georges Joliot, he, he told me that he would start with something even a bit smaller to get a standard side arm and cut and sometimes with the stretching and stuff. You know, it, it, well, stretching, you know, it doesn't stretch that much, but still, you finish with something a little bit bigger than when you started, uh, when we were talking about circumference, so. Uh, and then it depends on how you do your raising. So me, for me, it'll be the first time I see somebody else do it. You've never been around somebody else? No, no. Something. Well, in the, in, in the old days, I would pass one actually like, he was yeah. my roommate for a Oh, year. really? I was wondering about that because. Yeah, we worked together for a year, and this guy is great. I invited him too, but he said he was busy. Yeah. <laughs> His I, I work is I, excellent. I oh, my him God. Today, but he, yeah. He's been really sick. So oh, okay. I, you know, I called him last night. So. Yeah. And this he's guy is. Much last yeah. He does incredible stuff. Everybody knows him. You know, he's a salad man. Yeah. He does incredible salads and stuff. You know? They make me sad with and, envy. Uh, he's the only other guy I saw raising, but we start raising together. So, you know, we're doing the same thing pretty much. Yeah. You know, and then, we, and then he left and we went both our ways. And I've never been exposed to somebody else who actually knows what he's doing. So, and I've been hearing about.
All right. Right. As much as I remember. We don't want to ignore our fans. How many fans yeah. do we have? Audio cut? Yeah, we had to answer the phone there for a second. Is it back? Back, okay. Is a swage block required, or can you get away with a block of wood? I think swage only. Swage block for what? Uh, for, I presume, dishing? Uh, that must be what they're thinking. Oh, I don't do a lot. I rarely dish stuff. Uh, if I do dish something, it's extremely light. Yeah. You don't want to stretch that metal. So yeah. I work always from the outside. The, the technique of uh, raising, I use it on, on, on everything. On elbows, on uh, knees, anything that needs a curve. Yeah. A big curve. We're talking about a big curve. I mean, if you have a light, you know, a, a small spot or whatever with a small, you know. A small down, shape. Yeah. Shape. Cool. And when you do, then you just have this little wood block. Yeah. Here. Uh, yeah. And that's it's just nice. fairly shallow. Yeah. and. They get rounded off just with yeah, use, yeah, basically, yeah. right? It doesn't take too, too much, but that's a really I nice little log. Yeah, they hold up. It they hold up. <laughs> yeah. And you have a swage block there, too, but I don't know that you get too yeah. much mileage out of it. I don't use it that much. And not the kind with the cast in dish or anything no, like that. No, no, so, no, no. yeah, I don't really need that. So. So real quick, one of the things, I mean, we're talking about different types of raising or dishing or sinking and stuff, but it's one of those, we're not going to get into a lot of how-to today. No. Um, this we'll get derailed. <laughs> yeah, there would be too much talking, not remembering, so if you're wanting a more how-to video, this isn't going to be, you might be able to pick up some tips and tricks if you've got some understanding. I have been working on getting everything laid out in a way where I can do a video that goes through all the technical and like uh, more analytical side of, of raising. And, and We're talking happens. definitions and... Uh, yeah, definitions of terms and how you can calculate your blanks roughly to get Eric ran away. He said he'd be right back. I'm sure just to replace his uh, metal dust coffee. So this, one of the things you got to think about, oh, I'll start with this for a moment because he ran away. You've got this circumference, you know, you've got that. You've got all the surface area there. That surface area, you're going to turn it into a bowl. You got a comment? Yeah, the thickness, uh, the thickness is 0 0.08 inches. So that's maybe what, like two, two and a half millimeter? I don't know the conversion, yeah, it but it's just good. over 14 gauge. He also, someone else wants to know if we have separate channels. I think you're a recluse now, and I have a weird yeah, Instagram, you but. <laughs> the Thaden? Yeah. I don't want to insult anybody that actually does follow me, so there are some people that yeah. follow that, but yeah, it's just the Thaden. I think there's like four or five videos. There's a few interesting. One of the, one of the videos, actually, two of the videos talk a good bit about stretch racing. And in Santa Clara del Cobre, you have the ones with Wade, is that? Yeah, we those are good. Those are yeah. yeah, those are good. So Santa Clara del Cobre, they're raising copper from basically cast Indian puck. So they're stretch raising stuff. The same as what Josh. My is buckets. Playing. And then they also will stack blades up and raise seven of them at a time. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually stacking seven in Santa Clara, but the other video I've got online where I'm discussing. Some of them do like four or five, but anyway. Um, we're going through a video that I came across a bunch of years ago in Vienna, Italy, up in northern Italy, just like an hour and a half, two hours from Brescia, um, where they're stacking up seven plates of steel and making buckets. They're buckets for brickwork, but... You know. At least by the time this video is made, <laughs> yes. but the process has other possible applications. Yeah, it, it dates back. I mean, this town dates back to like Roman it's been iron working, yeah. They're digging up archaeological finds of blast furnaces a thousand, almost eight hundred years ago, and bloom furnaces, you know, a thousand years before that. It's been forever. This northern Italy, the whole Bergamasque Mountains region in northern Italy, has its own iron making tradition. Anyhow, yeah. we could go on all day <laughs> about this. Yeah, we could really get. <laughs> I think it was their records only go to the seventeenth century or something. And why, uh, when I was there, I think it was 2018 I was there, visited, but apparently a big flood wiped out almost the entire town. So okay. had to rebuild from scratch, so all previous um, records kind of... Yeah, yeah. But, but the... Cool it's definitely cool. Yeah. Cool there. 
Would you ever use an English wheel for smoothing or planishing? Twice I've gotten a hold of one at a reasonable price thinking, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to use that. I have never used one for anything, even outside of art related stuff. I've never well, used unless you're doing auto body work, right? But, yeah, I, I have not found a great use for them doing armor. In terms of selling armor, I believe uh, Eric Dubé does sell his armor. Ooh. But... Armor? You sell armor, right? What? You sell armor, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So it's your job. Yeah, it's his job. Yeah. It's, yeah. What I do. it's not my job anymore. You okay. could coax him into making something if you <laughs> if you make him a good offer, I think. It but a very interesting project. <laughs> you have to be willing to wait a long time, and it would probably cost more than going to sell yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, $100 million. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, should we light this thing up? What is step one on this for you? Well, we have a flat sheet. How do we make it not flat? I'm, I'm gonna grab my gloves. Okay, step one, grab the gloves. Oh, I'm gonna follow. Okay, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Yeah, he's got a full case. I got him a full case of Mountain Dew. That's his signature drink. Oh, by the so. way, this uh, live stream is sponsored by. <laughs> I think you're saying your old armor archive thread is still around. That's the signature of that thread as well. We should figure a way to we should figure a way to link to that. I feel like that's a great resource for tips and tricks. But yeah, if someone Google's you, they'll find the armor you did with Ugo, which is Patrick Thaden armor. It'll be that or. That's the, that's the full list. I Googled you the other day for that reason, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, if he has time, we're gonna get him to new, move to New York to do architectural iron work, and <laughs> that's what everyone said so far. I would love some earplugs. I only have one. My, it's not terribly helpful. <laughs> yeah, I would take some, thank you. I got old ones if you want. I have some in my work pants, back pocket dirty ones, but <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's fine. Oh, they even have the little head wrapper. So this was one of my first poster I found with an armor on it. I said, oh my God, look at that poster. So what I did, it was in the 90s, so I had it laminated. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was uh, in Ottawa at the, the Musee, uh, what was the Canadian Museum of Civilization. They had the Imperial uh, Australia uh, collection of armor, and they were they had this uh, contest, and they were uh, you had you could win a Harley Davidson, and you had this arm. This setup was uh, at the entrance of the museum. And I was with Bill Fidham from uh, the South Tower Armoring. Okay. He, uh, and uh, we did some yeah. SEA combat in the museum. That was back in 94. Uh, it was pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, hey, Rudolph, how are you doing, man? Rudolph from France. This guy, oh, yeah. Rudolph. I've seen some of his stuff. What does yeah. he do again? He does a lot of nice armor. Oh, yeah. He just I, raised I this uh, pig face. I him on Facebook. Yeah, he does great stuff. Yeah, excellent work. All right. We'll get him on the next one. Let's see. That's one big ball, Patrick. One of the things I do like to do, which I don't know that I'm going to do that here just because of why, I guess, but I will sometimes take it just slightly to get it going in the right direction. Okay. It doesn't affect the thickness all that much when you're just going shallow, so it wouldn't matter. Give it the well, if you, you want to go, I got that uh, lead bag there. I use that to dish a bit with a big, ba big, big, big pen well, he ball. Must have my sledgehammers there. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got his toys to do with him. Again, yeah, this has been a few years, and they're like, hey, no pressure. You should try and raise our net today. Well, we'll the clock is ticking. Oh. How long do we have? I'm going to smack this a few times. I'm going to put my earplugs in because cold work is the loudest kind. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, we haven't tried the video with this and the audio to see. Well, we're about to find out. It's going to matter much. You know, I have to stop a lot. Ask them if the audio is okay. Do they understand us? Yeah, uh, they have so far, but we'll see with the cold work. A lot of echo in here. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get too hideously loud in the video. We've noticed that sometimes it becomes a problem for people. Maybe finger over the mic. Where's the mic? One of those two holes. <laughs> yeah, I moved a little bit. And if my my stuff is too high up for you, yeah, I have a box if you want to stand on it. <laughs> Get up on your soapbox. They're borderline a bit too high for me, and I'm six one. Pretty straight to go. Oh. I have a lighter. Any quirks with this other than don't touch that? Yeah, don't touch the that. Yes, that's really hot. But that, uh, let's just bring it down a little bit. Well, that's a nice thing. It jumped off on me, see? Yeah, it's, it's really a, it's a bitch, you know? Yeah, this one's touchy. Yeah, it's a big, yeah. big pilot light. You, have you, under it, you can lock it in place. Yeah. So one of the things with angle raising, a lot of people run concentric circles. I got away from doing that just because as you're heating it up, you're losing heat and you're kind of chasing it all the way around and I got tired of chasing it. So I just started working areas. Um, sorry, it's taking me a moment. I got to think a little bit. I want to make sure I don't, you know, make a salad instead of her from that or something. Rudolph says we could use the fire to push the seal, to dish the seal in the wood block. It's smoky and messy. Yeah, he likes to get to the, right to the good stuff. Okay, well, I'm just going to start hitting it, I guess. We're going to see what, where it goes and how it goes. How All right. Go? Sometimes you just got to start. What are you showing off? Oh, I just want to show the scenes I've been playing around, trying to get square. Oh, square rolls? Yeah. Can we show us the cross section there? Ooh, nice. yeah, that's pretty crisp. Yeah. Nice. It's cool. That's a little thing that's cool to do. Yeah. You can really get into it on yeah. that. When you look at that, it's all, oh my God. <laughs> In the 14 and gauge. All of a it starts to look like something. Yeah. You, know, you feel like you're just making noise all the time. Yeah. And then, oh, starting to look like a ah. yeah. I don't think we'll get far enough, but the big square triangular rolls on well, the upper are, lip that's there that's the plate uh, we add to it afterwards yeah on the rein the brow yeah, reinforced plate yeah, yeah so we won't get to that but just that's that's something that patrick really likes to show off he's good at the big big triangle rolls yeah uh, i like patrick's how he does it Me, yeah. i don't do the same way my square rolls but pat he uses the force and tell him yeah Force is strong. Yeah, get get to it. All right, and go. So we almost all to be oxygen at a very very low output. You can't quite get this. That's more like it. You want to try slight reducing, or you're not worried? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Talking time is over. Time for hammering. Yeah. Yeah, millimeter. And when I finish and then all the metal accumulated at the forehead, I had seven millimeter thick steel at that Seven mil. I was telling you about I watched that video like two nights ago and I was telling that's about a quarter inch, I think, right? That's crazy thick. <laughs> That's what my shoulder is. Yeah. Did you just grind that down or leave it? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, that's proper bulletproof. Yeah, I want to I try out those, uh, you know, they have these bells on this propane and they heat up the. Uh, we had that two days ago. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, uh, that's normal? Okay. Is it too loud? Heads coming loose. Sometimes you have to hit your hammer with another hammer. And the cosmic dance continues. I'll go take a look. Uh, it's like 10 PSI. Usually, it's Yeah. The running pressure is a bit low, right? When it's running, it drops quite low. It goes back up on you. Yeah. That's pretty much where it is now. Maybe. Yeah, running at, because that would be. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what 60. Yeah, so that should be 20. That does seem kind of hot, doesn't it? So it could go down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that 20 is probably on the high side. Probably running at like 15 PSI. That's what it says, near as I can tell. Uh, Tyler B asks, what color temp are we going for before we start moving metal? <laughs> yeah, so almost like yellow, a nice yellow. I would go for orange yellow because I may be a little impatient. What do you got there? Oh. You want to tighten it a little or? We're going to get a little more height for an ergonomic working height. You're so tall now. What? You're so tall. You're the same height now. What is it in bar? Huh? Oh. I think it's in PSI. Yeah. It's gotta be like 15, eh? It's kind of ambiguous. Why is it ambiguous? A little, this thing's like a high pressure gauge. It's rated up to 200. What? The gauge is rated up to 200. So we're just at like the very bottom. It's like. Uh, it's hard to say uh, how much it, it says between each bar. Now. The actual running line pressure, it goes down below the red, the first red line. Yeah, you said okay, like well, right that's now. twenty. That's what I'm saying. Is it going to the first, the upper black? Or it's in between. Like the first red one. Yeah, just, just, just below that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, look at it. Look it's got to be at least fifteen, is what I'm saying. 
She looks good, right? You're getting a balanced flame. <laughs> if you up the fuel pressure, it's the fuel pressure is also fairly high. Whew. A lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah, try and get a nice big one. So that's kind of like, looks like maybe a uh, yellow orange. It's also very bright in this shop, so it's kind of hard to judge color objectively. Yeah. Yeah, we talked a little. I said. I don't know why not. I've never done that. Yeah. And is he working with the cone forge? Yeah, wow. He works with uh, well, he doesn't use a No, uh, like he has the like propane cone for right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that you get a bigger area yeah. more easily, so it might work a little bit better. We have some of those that we've been using for my bucket project a little bit. Here. Did you guys answer the, what color you start the, you, uh, to what color you heat it up before starting moving yeah. materials? He likes to get very, very hot. Uh, it looks kind of like a yellow orange, but it's also about the lighting condition. Welcome to Quebec. Yeah. Is it green or is it too hot? Well, it's not like Texas, though. <laughs> I've been into Texas heat, and man, it's hot. Patrick is using a ball pen hammer that's about 16 ounce, so. Which is a pound, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, he's gonna use the fork. So about four or 500 grams. Half a kilogram. Oh, okay. Tyler said, yes, 16 ounces is one pound. I'd be a bad pusher, man. <laughs> I don't know how much it weighs.
And we gotta keep in mind, uh, Pat, uh, Patrick is not in his shop with his stuff, and uh, so he's got to adjust to my stuff, so. We all have our favorite uh, steaks and stuff, so. Showing off, huh? Yeah. Oh, it is starting to take shape. So, do you do that like that all the time? Uh, you know, you have like you leave that little wave. You go on the other side of the wave, and you come back to that wave. I saw a guy in uh, Ukraine, I forgot his name, he's got this great YouTube channel, uh, yeah. and he's got this machine who, where he start is raising, yeah. creating all these waves and then taking out the wave one by one. Yeah. That was the first time I saw that type of process for raising. Raising is what's yeah. often called in like silversmithing and copper, copper ah. circles. Okay. This is hillbilly crib raising. This is so crazy. I mean, the thickness of these balls are just incredible. Man. And it's cool to see all those marking inside. Looks a lot like it should, should be. Wow. It's still a little rough, but kind of a little bit of a proof of concept. It's really, it's really nice, man. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Cool stuff. Oh, man. Oh, that's so this would be what, almost a pound? I think that's at least two pounds. It's around two pounds, I think. Rich for fine tuning the same process by hand. Those are the ones that I poured. You forged them? Nice work, man. Nice handle. Wow. Over the years, I've grown to be more of a blacksmith than an armorer. <laughs> but you can see how they overlap in this project. Yes, I mean uh, armor, uh, armor Smith uh, from the Ukraine. Yeah, this guy's great. He does great stuff. He's got a great YouTube channel. Yes, Rudolph, he's got uh, those hammers are pretty cool. He made, he made them himself. Sorry guys, I got the hiccup. <laughs> Maybe I should drink some Mountain Dew.
I have to admit, it's, it's heating up way faster. Well, it depends. Uh, Chad is ask, asking how much time you'll be spending on making a, an armet. Well, it depends on the armet, but uh, it's, it's hard to say. I'd say I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to do it in less than a month. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it goes faster, and sometimes it's just not going fast. It's, you know, it's uh, we're no machine. He's asking how much time would would go into making an, an armet. It's a really, really long time, and that's why it's very expensive. <laughs> Uh, 26 years. Well, we got 21 people following us. No, uh, that's not how I move my metal. <laughs> I do the traditional way, round and round and round and round. And then kind of work. So we've got all this extra metal. All that's going to have to, as it comes down, either get compressed into itself or pushed around into another area and stretched out. But we'll mm. see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Hello, friends. How you doing? Yeah, well, it'll be a nice bucket. The last time I tried uh, an armet, that's what I ended up with. <laughs> it's aluminum pop head. Yeah, for LARPing. Hi Sweden, how are you doing guys? We got people from France, Sweden. All right, we're about the... Uh, what time did we start? What, it's about mid 40 minutes? Something like that? I think we're about 40 minutes in right now. I feel like we must have talked for the first 40 minutes of the live stream. Yeah, well, the live stream has been on for an hour. Yeah. So maybe half an hour. Oh, I'm glad you learned stuff from my videos. Me, I'm learning today from Patrick. He's my hero. Do you have water? Yes. Oh. I just want to cool this where it hasn't got hot yet. Okay. You, uh, you want to answer this one? I'll get some water. Let's go stick it in the snow. 
Uh, I think Patrick does it asymmetrically just because he likes to hold on to the cool end and he saves some heat in one area and he figures he can work out any weirdness at the end of the day. I'm not sure there's much uh, method to this madness. <laughs> you gonna quench it in the snow? What'd you say to him? Ooh, we're doing a snow quench. We have a little snow left here. It's trying to melt on us. I'm just trying to cool off where I'm holding. None of this has reached any type of critical temperature to matter. Oh, that's true. Warm. Yeah. And once you get it down below black, it's far less of an issue. To yeah. That. With higher carbon, you do need to be careful even with that if it's been to critical. But with this, it should be okay. We'll but. see if I break it. Yes, that'll be an interesting... Uh, raised 4130. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Breakfast of champions. Oh, yeah. Actually, okay. it's the first time I taste it. <laughs> oh, it's sweet and sugary and highly caffeinated. So, a lot of people think it's way too sugary. Yeah, so if I start talking really fast because it's too much sugar, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's the synthetic caffeine, too, so it hits you different when you're used to coffee. I think. I'm not a marine biologist. <laughs> Did you answer that? <laughs> this one? Yeah, he's talking about it. I tried to talk about it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yes, Rudolph, we'll do more close-ups. Because I'm telling you, Rudolph makes <laughs> videos, and I'm telling you, you need close-ups. You want to see the metal. Oh. I thought he meant more close-ups of you. <laughs> We get the bird's eye view from Patrick's perspective. Hello from Belgium. The one though. But I must have been good at what you were doing. I mean, you know how you can do it. Yeah. I think I gave you the same thing. You didn't gave it to me. Oh, my God. 
Pretty damn awesome, man. It's a little ball jealous. I really like that the size of the mass. It's it's yeah. nice to work on. I think my largest is maybe four. That's what, like seven? the diameter of that ball do you think? Uh, I think it's around seven inches, something like that. A big piece of steel. Hi Belgium. Thanks man. I like my shop my workshop too. It's my man cave workshop. I really like it. By the way, guys, my shop, all of these, all of this is concrete. All of the walls, this is fake stones, all, uh, all made out of concrete, so fireproof. So, well, my shop should catch fire, hopefully. But all these beams are made out of concrete, only the ceiling beams that are wood. The sheet is zero, zero, uh, point zero eighty. Uh, it's about, it's just a little bit more than 14 gauge. Uh, 14 gauge is what in millimeters? Oh, about uh, hmm. two, two point something. Anyway, it's, a, it's just a little bit thicker than 14 gauge. Yeah, I think it's that 2.032 millimeters at 14 gauge. It's, well, in this spring 3140, 080 is about, I don't know, it's just one little bit thicker than 14 gauge. So you guys hear us over the torch? Oh, it sure is good. I mean, once it's temper, uh, once it's uh, hardened and tempered and everything, uh, unless a bus hits you, you should be in trouble. C'est correct, Rudolf, te pardonne avec ton anglais. <laughs> ah, regarde, Rudolf est un French guy, so sometimes he struggles with his uh, English. I know that struggle. Hey, is that hey Tom, how are you doing, man? Tom's online. Yeah. And he says the sound sounds good, so. I like the sound. Yeah, he likes the sound. <laughs> oh, the audience. I thought it was just a musical sound with the hammer. No, I just asked that guy if he could hear us talking over the call. That's good, too. Yeah.
Salut Fred. T'as probablement, probablement raison. Euh, après ça, c'est la, la discrétion du client. Là. Oui, pour le GN, euh, 1.5, c'est en masse, en masse, en masse. Yeah, we're getting there. Well, somewhere. Oh, we're, we're getting there, man. Now I'm going to have to try it your way. Uh, uh, I don't want to compete with your technique. It'll probably conflict. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually going round and round and round. I, I've never thought of doing it like that. We'll just make the front look like one. The back will look like chaos. Cookies! Oh yeah! Oh, I like cookies. <laughs> oh, cookies. Cookies and Mountain Dew make me run. <laughs> And this episode is sponsored by the cookie store. <laughs> All right. You can take a break, huh, Pat? I mean... I'm going to finish my cookie. Yeah. Then we can go. Maybe take a sip. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're, really, they're really good. Good cookies. Mm. So, guys... Uh, so far, uh, is it cool? Is it cool what we're doing? Uh, have any suggestion for shots or whatever? All right. Uh, How many people are actually entertained by this? So I guess. This thickness late, uh, in a later period was a bit more thicker, probably. I have to say, I, I'm not that well versed on all the thickness. thickness. Usually we're asked, when I do something, I, I'm being asked specific thickness and stuff, so I do what the client wants. Uh, 1.5 for, for a salad. For a salad, 1.5 uh, millimeter. I guess so. For the historical ones? Yeah. Yeah, there's a range. Even within one piece, there's a range. Thanks for the event, we love our work, we, like, we love what we do. Yes, it's super unique, uh, the live stream uh, armor making. But what Patrick already uh, did it a few times, uh, live streaming and making armor, so it's not a world first. Patrick started it. So right now, the piece there's about 40 minutes into it right now, so it's moving real fast. I mean, he's actually faster than me. Well, I was not adjusting it well, because usually, for some reason, I use less oxygen. 
But uh, no, I, I was saying I'm not, I did not adjust my torch like you do. Thanks, Vampy. The more, uh, the more I do armor and the more I talk with other people, the more I realize I don't know that much. There's so much to learn and discover. Yeah, always. There's always something. You're always thinking of, okay, I got it, and then all of a sudden somebody showed you other, other ways. Yeah, it's like Photoshop, man. That tool it can be used to do anything. <coughs> yeah, saver, guys. This is a bus in the shop. You need a gas saver always. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. <laughs> you can do it. Do Not my hair. So half of this is flat sheet still, and the other half is starting to look like a helmet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. A long time ago when I was making pieces and people were getting you know, concerned about how fast I was moving and they wanted to see progress, I would sometimes raise one side really far along and then shoot it from the way where it looked like it was mostly done, <laughs> even though I was only like half pounds. You sneaky bastard. <laughs> it's like, careful to put fun of, uh, photography. But yeah, if you go back and look at some of the pictures, I don't know if you'd be able to tell even looking at them now because I was like, try to shoot it just right. <laughs>
the side there. You cool it up? Party with this knife too. Weather ain't so nuts out, but it's not that hot. Yeah. I mean, a little toasty for the fingers, but. I'm not worried. He's a superhuman. <laughs> yeah, he's a professional. Remember, kids, do not try this at home. Go to the neighbors. I'm an armorer, and you're not. Somebody asking how they can help contribute to make fun stuff happen, it sounds like. <laughs> Do you have a Patreon? Nope. I tried to start one, but uh, I got confused and I quit. Merci, Fred. J'aime Rami. I'm talking to a French guy. I like that term, armor drummer. It's a percussion instrument. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a drummer. I don't want to try with my eye. I'm sure I'll yeah. my touch the feet. Here's us working on these ones. Big ones. Whoa, that's cool. Very musical. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's an interesting way to share video. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do the uh, buckets that I brought. <laughs> That's crazy. That's Very just, musical. That's, That's armor coming. That's just crazy, man. Uh, Want to take a break, Pat? All right. We're limited on hours, man. So oh, yeah. 12, We're going, well, we've been going for 85 minutes so far. Well, you have you started like maybe uh, what an hour. hour? Yeah. yeah. You can touch that. Keep the heat all localized, and you can kind of keep working. Yeah. yeah. That's stuff that I never, never thought of. I'm gonna cool that off just a little bit on this side, because you know. So you can? Are you are you gonna try and circle around farther now? Yeah. I mean, it's one of those. I guess you could call this a course. If I make it all the way around, but it's really not because I'm chopping and hacking at it. And it takes a while before I feel like taking bites. GM, I don't know uh, where this the, the, the steel ball came from. So a friend gave it to me, but I don't know where he got it. 
So there's probably some company somewhere that sells them, but I, I wouldn't be able to say. Oh, well, this is my place, my house. It used to be a barn that I renovated into my house. Yeah, this really isn't holding Pretty damn nice. cool place. Oh, it's just thin stuff. Yeah, test it with your tongue. <laughs> Don't lick it. God. That's his catchphrase. Wow. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to do a lick. See, now I can hold it over here. Well, Fred, I made an arm. I made two armets so far, three armets so far, but the last one was like, I don't know, five years ago or something. And you kind of forget sometimes how you did it the last time. It's not like, I'm pretty sure in the old days, when you had the master armor, he probably had the whole village working for him, and you, you had the elbow guy, you would have the knee guy, and the grief guy, and they, would, they all would get really, really good at what they do. But us, modern armor, we have, to, we have to get good at everything, and sometimes you forget uh, how the hell did I did that last time. That's why I make videos. They only <laughs> need to know one style. We need to know all the styles. Yeah. The centuries. <laughs> oh, hey, what a nice t-shirt. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's getting smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a team player yet. Yeah. I've been wearing another one for days. So. <laughs> yes, uh, I do most of, uh, I, I do make a living out of armoring. I've been uh, making a living out of it for, well, since 1987, but let's say 19, uh, early 90s. Sometimes I will take on uh, odd jobs around it just to get me out of the shop. But my main income comes from armor. You don't want to just... But it's a very, very hard way to earn your living. It's a very hard way. Like in my case, I'm alone, so you know, it's uh, working alone all the time. It's not, it's fun, and sometimes it's not. Yeah, I wonder if it's normalized or rather than annealed, because that's that's hard to see. Yeah, it's hard. You said it was annealed, normalized, something. Hey, we're asked, what's the what's the best advice we can give to a beginner armor? Well, hammer, man. Just hammer out everything. Hammer, hammer, hammer. <laughs> Work it out, you know. Keep <laughs> doing it. all other interests. Become obsessive. Live in your shop. Work 14 to 16 hours a day, at least six days a week. Maybe give one day for your body to recover. See the real thing. If yeah. Any, if there is any possibility of seeing the real thing, go see the real thing. If you have an opportunity to handle the real thing, even better. There's a guy named Wade Allen really generous with sharing information and letting people handle real pieces. And, and today's beginner armorer have a great advantage because they've got a bunch of people, crazy people, making video how to make armor. So that's a great, great, great advantage for today's beginners. So just go on to the web and check out all those tutorials. There's a bunch of them. So when I started 1998, Somewhere in there, I started going out to museums. I was still using film camera. I was getting 800,000 speed film because that was the only way you could get a shot in a museum because they don't have a lot of flash photography. And so I would shoot, you know, eight or 10 rolls maybe, and I would have to wait to see how they came out, to see if I was able to avoid the glare on the glass or if I got the right angle. And it's one of those, I can't go back. I mean, it was a one-time trip to a museum and it was like, okay. So every photograph I took was precious. It was one of those, checking the lighting, checking the aperture, trying to get that shot perfect. I mean, with today, you know, people have started sharing online, it's like 10,000 new photos of armor have just cropped up by somebody who was sharing their museum trips. And it's like, I was lucky if I had like 100. Yeah, I remember. Museum. And it's one of those, so it was every book you could find, you had to buy. Now it's like half the books are online and people have photographed tens of thousands. I mean, yep. I can't imagine how many photographs are online now. At the time it was, you had to, you had to be obsessive to get every little detail you could. In my time, I actually had to write on paper <laughs> and put it in an envelope and send it to a museum so I could buy pictures of the collection. I got pictures from the A21 from the Wallace collection. I actually talked with David Edge. I shared my work. He was very, very polite. <laughs> 
But that's how we communicated at the beginning of the 90s. There was no internet. So the first piece of armor I actually got to hold, I went to visit the Wallace collection and I had got, gone ahead and arranged to meet David Edge so I could look at some pieces. And I showed up just as he was trying to run out the door to an auction, it was a Christie's or Sotheby's auction, and he was like, this will be even better. And so I hopped in the cab with him and another lady there and we went off to this auction and it was an armor auction. And so we were able to handle a bunch of real pieces, Maximilian fluted helmets and various wow. things. It's like, Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty good to hang out with David Edge and look at armor that's about to go on sale. And, yeah. yeah, that's pretty damn but cool. The first time I picked up the Maximilian fluted style helmet, you know, it, it was one of those. There was so much my brain picked up on that I wasn't able to see in photos. The way it feels, the way it looks on the inside, the thickness yeah. distribution that you can just the balance of the piece. It was really weird. I was not expecting it to be so much different than the the. That was being made that I had actually seen. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's why this summer I'm going out there. I want to go see the Montova collection. I want to see those up close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hammer Yeah, let's get to it. Burning daylight. Yeah, Fred. Good advice. Wear air, 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 air protection. Yeah, tonight is. Tonight? That's how you said. You know that ringing in your ear? I got it too, man. I'm doing good so far. I'm careful with the air protection. You For got it, the lost car. You got the constant ringing in your ears, you? The ten tinnitus? Uh, you know that ringing in your ear? You have that? Are you lucky? Well, I got it. The it first shop I was in, it was like a stone ceiling basement. And nobody had any kind of safety protection of any sort. And everybody's hammering cold on stuff. And I remember after a week or two being in there, I mean, nobody was doing it. I didn't know I was, you know, young and dumb. I, I noticed my ears were getting a little ring afterwards and stuff like that. So I was like, I got to do something. So I started wearing hearing protection in their shop. And they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm getting this weird ringing. And, and after I wore uh, earmuffs for a while, it seemed like it went away. And like loud noises bug the crap out of me. I mean, I still, nah. I do loud stuff, but it's one of those I really don't. Oh, me, I've got that constant ringing in my ear all the time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not as good about wearing hearing protection as I should, but. Funny, I, I always wear. Pocket earplugs. I always had protection. That's where, that's why it's weird. <laughs> Remember safety glasses. Why are you laughing, man? <laughs> all right. Safety glasses, gloves, hearing protection. Yeah. He's got a glove. Yeah, he's got one glove. That's cool. He's halfway there. <laughs> uh oh, the gloves are off. How did this turn out to into turn into a hockey match? <laughs> hey Wade, how you doing man? It's Wade. Wade is with us. Uh, Wade is saying that you suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do we have? Like another hour? What? I got what? One more hour to get this done? Then you'll be done. Ah, uh, that'd be cool. Two hours to get it done? If you get it done in one hour, I'll make a bunch of money off this arm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Wade, he's about uh, he's about an hour into it right now. He's actually moving that uh, steel real, real fast. I've never seen this uh, this way of raising, and it's actually pretty damn cool. Well, I'm just saying raising because it sounds good. Wade said, uh, I just, uh, wait, 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 there's a lot of comments right away. Okay. I really love Patrick's method, like of course, hair, uh, metal movement. <laughs> <laughs> that was it? Yeah. It's like an angry dog with the ears back.
Hi, Jean. Uh, well, Jean, when you are working, uh, you know, if your body is aching from the day before, uh, yeah, it will ache the day afterwards. You have to work in in uh, intelligently, so you don't push yourself too much because uh, you know when we're young, we do it, we do it, but eventually your body will stop. Uh, it will stop being young, and you have to, you know, take care of your body because uh, you're stuck with it the rest of your life. So if something hurts, you stop and uh, you do something else. Like when I do raising sometimes, when I did the great bassinet raising, I would just work on it a few hours a day and do something else that was less strengthful. So my body would uh, have time to uh, uh, relax and uh, recuperate. We're not talking about you. It's not about you today. Well, Jauk, uh, for the ear thing, uh, me, it's a constant thing. It rings all the time now. So, and I use a lot of protection for my ears, but somehow I, I, I've got it. It rings all the time. There's a genetic component to that as well, but you Wait, we started with uh, 0 0.80, 0 0.080 thickness, that's about a little, a little thicker than 14 gauge. And uh, Wade wants to know uh, what thickness we, when we, once we're finished. I'm not worried about it. I don't care. It's not my helmet project. That's why we like Patrick. Because I just don't like <laughs> Yes, wait. Uh, 0 0.080. Yeah. 3140. Still. How much for an armet? It depends on uh, who's making it and the quality and stuff, but expect, uh, expect uh, you know, anywhere between three to five thousand bucks easy for a uh, quality uh, hat. Yeah, wait, sometimes, uh, me too, sometimes the metal doesn't go where I want it to go. <laughs> you always have to be really, really, really uh, concentrated on what you're doing and how you're hammering it and how to maintain the constant hammering.
Well, in my case, uh, ideally, for an armet, you know, I'd, like, I'd be really glad if I could produce one uh, in 80 hours. But it rarely takes me uh, so little time. It always takes me a lot of time. Well, I'm getting older too, so on. I just don't need, I don't have the need to be very, very fast doing it. You know, I, I try to enjoy what I do, so it'll take the time that it, that it takes. This said, when you give a, pro, a fixed price, well, you, you know, you're, 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 you have to live up, up to it. If you take more time than uh, uh, anticipated, well, that's, that's too bad for you. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, uh, I hear you. If you could at least have a, a special tool for thickness, it'd be great. Okay. I'll take a Uh, Tom was saying, if only someone made a tool for easy measuring armor thickness. <laughs> I got mine in my you truck. Know, you know, there may be somebody doing that, doing a run of 20 more of them. So if anybody's interested, I'm setting up to do a run of 20 of them. It's probably going to be a little bit higher than last time, but I'm working on it. Can you explain what it is? Acme Armor Caliper. You can go to the website, acmearmorcaliper.com. They'll tell you all about it. I'm not going to try and explain right now. It's the Coyote's <laughs> preferred I'm brand. The, I'm in the middle of trying to hammer. <laughs> Wait, no, he can't show. He's not included in this live stream. Who? He's just chatting. I don't think he can share pictures as a, somebody chatting. Wait. But this year, should be this year. But that would probably be it. I'm only going to do 20 more. Probably. We're trying to hide here now. Sorry. Wade's gonna put in the link for you. The link for the... the oh, your, your, uh,
or like a walk. You can force that into a walk handle and oh, I just yeah. fold it over into a tube, you know? Apparently it was hot over there. Go grab over there. Over here? Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Grab that. This time it's an uh, oxygen and propane. I don't have the budget for acid burn. Wow. Don't like it. So this is about, I'd, I'd say, 70 minutes of work. When you're done that one, you can get started on this one. If this was mild steel, I'd just take it, toss it in the bucket, and pick it right back up and keep going. We don't want to break this. I think it'll be. Yeah, way to, uh, the magic, it sure is magic. I think I can get it to reasonable depth before the end of the day. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about, what, 70 minutes of work? Jeez. And it looks great, I mean, I know, in my, raisi really my raising don't look great like that. It's lumpy and asymmetrical a little bit. Yep. Slap and tickle it. Oh, still have about 21 people checking us out. Cool. Yeah, we're taking a little break, so... Hope Patrick can recuperate a little bit. We're going to be living on caffeine and cookies today, okay? Yes, sir. Thanks, Wade. I sure love my shop, too. Maybe we should get in there and work on this one while you're waiting. Oh, just start swapping helmets out? Yeah. And get them moving? Yeah. I don't think so. I want to look at the thickness before I mess with that one anyway. Five so millimeters, MP. That's pretty, pretty damn thick. <laughs> Cookies and Mountain Dew isn't enough pay to keep me like rolling multiple projects. No, I do that one. Day. I do that one. Hey, you know what that means? Stackers? Steaks. Ste oh, steaks, okay. Wait a minute. Oh, if I push my glasses all the way up, I see it more Ooh. sharper. All right, the steaks, all right. Let's check. This is my big one. I had it cut out from a two and a half inch thick piece of steel. What's cool about this one, it absorbs a lot of the energy. So when you're hitting on it, it really, uh, you can feel it. And then I got these, but I don't have that much steaks, I have to admit. I mean, you know, some of these I made for specific job, but that I've never really used again. Uh, like, it, this for raising, I use this one and the, the big ball here. And then I had these made to uh, help me work uh, greaves, to make greaves. And then uh, I got the smaller one here. I got the different uh, size mushroom steaks. And then, uh, but a lot of the work I do, I use this baby. I, I got this nice edge here, so that helps me to do a lot of stuff. You might say I have a, 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 I don't know, a simple, Simple shop with simple tools. Uh, I see some of the guys, they got incredible amount of stakes and hammers. But uh, I don't know, I just... 
life. I'm, I guess I'm satisfied with what I have. And sometimes I learned, okay, yeah, I need a special steak to do something, but you know, most of the time I get I get by with what I've got. I pinched some metal there. Yeah. Hey, tell these guys. Come around and be on the other side. Okay. So here, we're just doing a quick check. You kind of got to wait for it to find the thin spot. So that one's bottoming out 0.085. Point, maybe 0.09. Oh, 0.088. So it's gotten a little thicker. It started 0.08. Some parts we, I read more down 0.08 still. Yeah, that one's sitting around 0.08. Maybe so a this, little less even. This is probably an area where I more folded it down. And then where I had a big wrinkle and I squished it right, into itself, it's you're going to get thicker. it a little thicker. 0.09. Yeah, so you're getting some variability through there. Yeah. So one of the things you can do, which I've done intentionally on some projects, is all that metal, you've got a lot of surface area. So you've got to take the surface area because of the giant circumference and either compress it into thickness or stretch it out into length. I have taken and pushed the metal around to the front and then pushed it into itself. And I think I did one where I more than tripled the thickness, the starting thickness of the material. So it was stout in kind of the front brow area. I've also taken and stretched it out into length where I needed to get more area. I started with a blank and started checking. It's like, oh, I need some more over here. So I actually just kind of pushed the metal around and then hammered it into length. True. Sure. Yeah. You can move metal a lot if you kind of figure it out. Okay, I'm going to cool this off a little bit. I think it's probably good. I can touch it, so should be yeah. alright. If you look at the thickness data of the originals, it also varies quite a lot, and usually not super intentionally. <laughs> it's a lot like, oh, a patch of three millimeter here, and then over here only two millimeter. And if you look at my buckets, they're a lot like that. Well, it's an art form, huh? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there's no machine that can replace the... Well, there are machines, right but now. in the end... <laughs> yeah. Like, in the 15th century. Yeah, well... The, uh, they, they knew what they were doing. They did have power hammer and stuff, yeah. but the knowledge was there. Yeah. And today we're always kind of always trying to discover, is it the right way we're doing right now? You know, yeah. it's always the we're question. And, and the fact that uh, we do it by hand all the time, I tried all kind of shortcut with machine and stuff, but in the end, by hand is the way to go. For me, anyways. I do have that planishing hammer, but I don't really use it, use it that much. Well, it looks a little cooler now. <laughs> I, I can't say I've ever used another quench piece of armor, I don't think. No? You ever use all that Texas snow? No. Yeah, you're right, Wade. Uh, I've, uh, I, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen that on an actual Actually, I think it was on your your breastplate you you had at the hammer uh, at the hammer and uh, wait a minute uh, at the the first uh, oh man I forgot and 2016 the first hammer in with the United League's armor you had your, all your stuff there the forging yeah yeah I'm making noise yes yeah. Yes, uh, for punch, uh, for making holes, yes, I, I will. I have a punch and I have a drill, depending on what I have to do. This is the punch I use most of the time. Uh, a 20 punch, uh, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, Roper? Yeah, Roper. No, these are quite easy to find. I really like it, I use it a lot. Look at these balls, oh man, that's just crazy. He starts from a, a half inch thick plate, I think, when he starts doing things. It's just crazy.
plants them in a vise so that I can work at the same tree. But uh, I saw in the comments where had mentioned the breast plates being more intentionally picked this distributed. That's the one big exception where I think they really are doing it on purpose. oxygen we got left all right we got about 200 pounds so we'll hook up the next bottle we'll let how cold was that when we started uh oh it was probably i had 100 usually at me i don't spend that much oxygen but i realized i wasn't adjusting it right <laughs> i'm not saying i'm right <laughs> well it's heating up way faster Well, Fred, when the armor is finished, we will uh, we, have, we will harden it and then uh, temper it and pretty much that. We'll probably normalize it first. Yes, Wade. Me too. Uh, I would uh, keep my uh, I would keep the oxygen very low. I was told to keep it real low. To uh, that spend too much oxygen, but I'm realizing that uh, that was a load of uh, BS because uh, right now, the way uh, Patrick has it, it's really heating up real fast. Uh, what do you mean, what I'm running now? You mean the uh, pressure? Well, right now, the, I only have that gauge for the propane. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. It doesn't tell me how much pressure is coming out, I think. Or maybe, or maybe I just don't know. Man. And the oxygen. Now the oxygen, you know, we're at, uh, I'd say, about 20 pounds or something. Because when it's in use, the gauge comes back down to the first red dot. And now I've got 200 pounds left, so we'll have to change the bottle real quick. This setup is heating up a lot of oxygen, that's for sure. But it's heating up stuff real fast. This is propane, and this one is oxygen. Yes, it's very speedy. Changing the tone with 
Yeah. It's getting there. We're looking at like nine and a half front to back, eight and a half left to right. Uh, for the the helmet itself. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, well, you know, it's about six. Maybe the, the headwear is gonna go on. It's about eight, eight inch from back to front and uh, six inch. So side to side. Nine and a half. No, wait, that's way too much. Nine ish. And then it's how much space we leave for the, uh, the lining. Yes, we well, try more oxygen and a bit more propane while you, you adjust your propane uh, to the pressure of your oxygen. Uh, me, I have I have never tried it. Now I've been enlightened. <laughs> Yes, there will be a crease uh, from front to back. I would offer to take a turn, but it's your show. Yeah, I, I, I set on my hammers then because I, I, they kind of slip. Mm. Yeah, it could be you want a thicker uh, glove? No, it's no? not that. It's just I wasn't wearing the glove and I'm not used to it. Oh, okay. This I've got a heavy duty left hand welding glove. Oh, I'm messing up uh, the. Patrick soft hands. Sheesh. Uh oh. Mm. Step back. I was debating on which way I wanted to go next. Because it's kind of all lumpy, bowl shaped ish now, so. All right, we're getting there, man. Whether I wanted to push the sides in or the front and back in. Well, I'd take that back in if I were you, but you're you. I would bring the back a bit down. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, wait a minute, where is that? Ah, there it is. I just want to tell you what I think you should do so that you can do the opposite out of contrarianism. So you can defy all expectations. And do something totally contrary. Front. Back. Hmm. So we don't forget. It'd be hard to tell without that. We don't want to confuse it. Well, we could make a Norman, Nor Norman hat. Yeah. Or we could do a Bobby hat, too. <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot of sugar. Hmm. It's your face, but it looks more hey, you guys, if you get hungry, well, I got some pizza, so we could uh, break for lunch. <laughs> the starting circle was 16 inches. All right, Wade doesn't want fast to take a break. Wait a minute, Wade, you're gonna leave us all alone? Gotta run away up the What a nerve! We like you anyways, Wade. 
<laughs> well, if I'm not mistaken, YouTube is uh, recording this video, so most people can come back to it later on. They will be able to skip forward. Not a lot of YouTube videos showing this in real time. Yes, sure. It's in my plans, uh, Wade. It's in my plans to go around uh, and visiting guys. That's uh, uh, something I'm planning on. That in mind, boys. That's cool way to... Uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to see that, that breastplate. Was this the one that he was doing uh, live with while doing, while doing it? Oh, that's cool, yeah, that was a nice, that's a nice breastplate. Wade was telling uh, me uh, how he loved that breastplate you made for him. The one you made during your live. Uh... The really crappy live stream? Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something different. That's the one he started at the forging. Not much started at the forging, but yeah. And if you cut it out of the camera, it'll look maybe 30 minutes or an hour. So it's half done. Ah, so it's probably half done. And then we'll have all that extra metal in the front. We'll push it to the fix it. We'll cut it out. Uh, no, Tom, uh, we're, ba we're basing it on the, the B1 from the Mantova collection. Uh, we're basing it from this one. Uh, just a second. What? This one. Yeah. This one. We've got a lot of back right here. I don't know yet. I haven't looked at one. I have a top back on the bottom.
have any options? No, no. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yes, Tom, I showed it for you. Am I in your way? <laughs> yeah, me too, I like the B1. Smoothness of it. When I do my raising, they're not, it's not nice like that. <laughs> nice? Yeah. Well, I like the way it's all smoothed out. Me, I, I don't have the same finish. So, one of the things to note though, if you look up here, we really haven't hit any of that. So, as far as thickness, that's the same. Well, yeah, up, up there, yeah, it won't change at all. Well, you should weigh it on the steak a little. Don't think that changed it. Point zero seven nine five. No. Throw another decimal zero in front of that. You know. Yeah. It's getting warm, Joe. We're looking at roughly that front to back. So somewhere about there is where the brow is going to need to be. So all that's going to push down. There's a good bit of extra metal here. Yes, I think uh, Patrick has balanced it real good. Uh, well, I'm learning today. 
I will be adjusting my gas saver and the, and the pressure of uh, my oxygen and uh, propane because uh, it's really heating up real fast. Sounds a. Uh, I've been told, wait, that you like to do uh, wise cracks. Is that true? Uh, Wade says uh, he never does wise crack. He prefers to call it running color commentary. That works. I'll just stick with that. <laughs> so where are we at at the pressure? How much? Uh, well, we got 100 pounds left of uh, oxygen. So what's the thickness on those? Uh, it's somewhere between 0.09 and maybe as low as 0.07. Occasionally there'll be a little thin spot, but it's very variable. It'll change from one heavy mark to the next. So yeah. you kind of go crazy, getting more and more detailed measurements. But this one is done with a power hammer, so it's fairly smooth inside. But the ones done by hand, the ones done by hand, you get a much richer texture. Oh yeah. I think because the slightly off-centered blows in the sledgehammer. Helps knock all the uh, scale out. Whereas this, it builds up and it like, pounds in. Look at that. Wow. It's really cool. Cool stuff. Yes, uh, yes, way they'll take a bit more oxygen. But hey, it's for the greater good.
Yeah, yes, I think it's the highest so far. It's getting warm, warm. Yeah. Usually it's a lot colder uh, around my place. For some odd reason, usually it's like minus 15, now it's like plus five. Crazy, crazy, crazy weather. How are you doing on the... Oh, that was empty. You are honoring good. Just crazy. Well, so far the phone is doing okay. It's yeah. not heating up or nothing. You probably have a nicer phone than I have. <laughs> At least I have something nicer than you have. My sister made that for me. Bassinet. That's a keeper. That's like a quarter inch. Oh wow. Five sixteenths. I started from three millimeters to this thickness. Yeah, and, uh, this beautiful texture there too. Yeah. That was that crazy, crazy time, man. And my torch was not adjust like now, so it takes forever to heat it up. Yeah. Oh, there's another roll. Practice rolling. So are we out of oxygen? Um, I think it's getting there. I think he's just uh, cooling it in the snow again. I think he said he felt the pressure was dropping a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think we're gonna change it. What? We can roll it for a minute. Okay. I can't believe it. It's really going fast. I mean. What, we're about what uh, I'd say an hour, hour and a half in, into it. Yeah, something around there. Well, we started the the live, and you guys talked for what almost half an hour. Yeah. So we got a, a hundred and forty-five minutes so far. So yeah, it's a good uh, almost two hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> I am paying attention.
Oh, you're running the 20 now. I think we're all out. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Uh... You have a little fire. Yep. No more oxygen. Uh, Good thing we got a, another bottle. Come on, give me something. One more hit. One more time. Mm -hmm. I think we're running on fumes. Okay, after this one. So it's oh, he's going it back down now. There you go. I think that's it. Now for the real exciting part. Uh, you want to just tell us a little about your thought process? You mentioned to me now you're trying to pull some of this down into length rather than compress it into thickness. Yes, what you just said. So that's something you're just constantly calculating as you go, more or less. It's one of those, this we're kind of just going for speed, seeing how far we can get in the amount of time we have. So it is one of those I'm not as concerned with some of it. Right. It's distribution. If I'm pulling it out into like, I mean, the material needs to go somewhere. Um, let me see some more of that. Well, we, so we start now. I'm going to melt that. <clears throat> uh, what do you want to? 16 inches across to begin with, right? Yeah. There's this little guy. It's not quite long enough, eh? Yeah, let me Give it a little... Uh, better not risk it. Well, you have a good center line mark if it's under 12 either side. Well, you, uh, you know, approximate it. Yeah, okay. Well, Just roll her on along. Okay, that's like... Eight. Yeah, if we call it eight to there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we're almost not. Oh, so. Right there, we gained almost an inch by pulling it into one. Yeah, right, and that should, I mean, we could check with the gauge and see, because if you're reducing the circumference this way as you push it down, you should be keeping the material relatively even in thickness rather than thickening it. Yeah. Well, you haven't done that as much heavy work. Nine? That's 16. I'm curious to grab... Yeah. Yeah. Depends on... I may not be in the curve of You know, where I started measuring from it. Yeah, just somewhere in the middle of the tail. You want to give it a quick... No. Well, I only got... It's not my job. I'll hold it. Camera? Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll cool. I'll be off for a moment. Usually I have a plant this device, like I said, so. Let's see. Ooh. Right down here at the left, we're almost at point one. Uh, so, I. Eight. That's not quite thick. Yeah, I'm still compressing it some then. 
spot a little further in. Still, we're reading 0.09. We're getting some thickness, but let's see if that's a warble. How big is your workshop, Eric? It's a, uh, well, the full slab is 45 feet long by 18 feet wide. There you go. Ooh, and I've got 14, in, uh, 14 feet uh, to the peak. At the, at the highest. One of the reasons I have a ceiling, I got some all the toxic fume pen to go up. Okay. What is it there? There we're reading just under 0.08. So that's uh, the part you push straight down still. So I'm not mucking with it a lot as far as... No, you're getting a little thickness. You're not getting yeah. any significant thinning. But I, I haven't been worried too much yet about whether or not I'm trying to draw it out or push it in. Yeah. I definitely was pushing some of it in. Yeah. But that was such a big warble that I've got over here. So it's like, yeah. let me just stretch that out rather than try and compress it all right. into itself. If I compress it all in myself... I mean, you might double the thickness yeah. just in that ripple. So it's like, yeah, no, let's not I'll play that game. The 10% that you did or so, 10%, <laughs> not so bad. Yeah, so, I mean, it still looks a little funky, but if you kind of look at it from this angle, I can bump that up a little bit through here, pull that down over there some more, which will even out this line. And then we start getting it to look like something. I don't know. It'll be something. Bucket. We'll just watch him eat his cookie. <laughs> the, uh, oh, he's changing. No? Okay. I'm mumbling to myself a little bit. So I think have a sugar brush. If you guys want a pizza or something, you could, uh, you know, break one up. You could always. Uh, Take a break and uh, let's and say we start it. back in and uh, I don't know. The time it takes to eat pizza. Oh, I was going to say, do we need a break? Do we need Fair to just day. bring pizza down and I can eat it between hammering? Because it's oh, one of those, it looks like pizza on the helmet. It looks like yeah, it's heat it up on there. There's still a long ways to go. I mean, it's like, okay, yeah, we're getting some depth, but it's like, it's, it's so I still need to push that in like four inches. That means not quite as much, but. Well, so you guys know for the heat and uh, you know where uh, I don't want to have a I don't want to run a sweatshop. But, you know. uh, Patrick's used to it. I think that's how people treat him. Oh, yeah, you can have a pizza <laughs> and uh, get back to the stream, start another stream afterwards. I'd be down. Patrick, you're the boss. What do you think? What? I wasn't listening. It's a uh, quarter to two. To to you want to? He wants to keep working, eh? Uh oh. Well, you want, I can go cook the pizza up and bring it in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll bring it in there. That's what I was going to say. As long as you're not sad if you miss a little bit of hammering while you're prepping stuff. Everyone in the chat's calling you lazy for even considering it, so. I wasn't considering it. Okay. Was All right, good. Hammer. See? It's my fault. He's a good little boy, a hard worker. A bad it's my fault, okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm part of is the decaying way of doing all <laughs> yeah, Bad influence. Like, the reason it's taking longer is just because you take more breaks. You probably raise just as fast, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the break. And I like breaks. <laughs> I actually like taking siesta. Ooh. <laughs> well, I got that with oh, George in, uh, in France. He's in South of France. He takes a siesta every he has lunch and then it's siesta. Actually everything is closed down in South of France for, from noon to 2 p.m. So don't try Beautiful. to get food or anything during that period. <laughs> Everyone's taking a nap. <laughs> I think they're on to something. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Right, well, I'll cook up uh, the, the pizza and uh, uh, sure. be ready in sure. uh, half an hour. Sure. Just don't finish it before I get back. All right, we'll have to. You'll have to slow down a little bit. Nice. Just don't do it all the way through. Uh, oh, this is up, so I think everything's yeah. okay. Yeah. And you might have to readjust it. Oh yeah, I just shut them off to start over. All right, I'll do that right away. When I was running stupid long hours in my shop, I would sometimes just lay down some region on the concrete floor. <laughs> <laughs>
A quick 20. Well, what do you think? Should we get this done before he gets back? Yes. I mean, I guess you're helping, but it's mostly me. I, I try to be a good moral supporter. Anyway. <laughs> what are you listening to over there? Nothing. Oh. I won't be able to hear anything if I put music on. These things are dampening the noise quite well. That's good. All righty. He's got this all back on, eh? I'm going to cool this off once more so I get a fresh start. Okay. No hot metal. Yeah, well, well, we have it low. Hmm? Well, we have the heat way low. I shut it off. I'll no, no, that's, that's what I mean. Well, it's cool, cool it all the way, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we don't have to worry about that weird black heat. Or grabbing in the wrong place if I change where I want to hold. Yeah. You're worried about your hands. I'm worried about the material. Skin grows back. Really nice out here. This is t-shirt weather. Hey. Even Patrick, you've adapted. It was, he was frozen to the bone when he got here and it's basically spring. Oh, I'm okay. <coughs> All right. I can hardly get any work out of this guy. Let's get back to it. All right, turn it off or cranks it all the way open. Ooh, pretty. Remember? You're getting his stuff all wet. I know, I'm dripping everywhere. It's all muddy with <laughs> scale. <laughs> yeah. We are coming up on the Canadian muddy season. I'll go take a look. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're just running at 20. You were up to 25 line pressure before, eh? Like running pressure? A little better? It pops up to like 40 PSI when the torch is off. For a big rosebud, sure, it needs a lot. I just have a tiny little baby rosebud. I probably will run like 15 or 20, but I don't have a fuel saver, so every time I readjust the flame, and sometimes you can really tell you make it a little bit less hot, and it takes like 100 times longer. No. 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 He does have a lot of lovely dogs. They're very territorial. One of the things that I really like about this process is when you hit the hot metal with the hammer and it just like squishes. You know what I mean? One of the underappreciated aspects.
Yeah, you're really missing out on some. Patrick wants to know how many of you viewers are going to stick around for the whole thing. We're going to get this done, fit, polished. Stick around. You got at least like 28 hours left. You got enough Mountain Dew, you don't need sleep. Which one you're dead? Well, the problem is, I think that comes along with sugar. Wade says that he has archery from three to five, and then he has, so he needs to take a break. Oh, what kind of archery are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm just really into archery right now. Oh, cool. He runs a local club. Recurve or compound? Or traditional Chinese archery? Ooh. Yeah, I gotta get into English longbow somewhere down the line. What's that? Are you just talking to the people in the chat? Yeah. I gotta entertain myself somehow. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I'm never in the area. What? Oh, I'm just talking to the people in the chat. Mind your business. <laughs> Yeah. He's just in here for entertainment purposes and make jabs at me once in a while. I'm just wondering if this is worthwhile for other people or they're just going, that's just playing in the background. I like the sound of tinking hammers. That's nice too. That's how I was watching your other video there. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, me and my friend have been getting into uh, Asiatic archery, all the thumb draw techniques and stuff. Sorry, Patrick's getting upset. I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm not a fan of this. Me neither. I like just, you don't have a ball pain, do you? I couldn't bring all my hammers. I have one of those like uh, traditional raising hammers. I'm doing air quotes here. <laughs> Let's go see if I can find it. <clears throat> That's the closest I got. Not really, but you give it a shot. Head might be on the loose side, but yeah. Yeah, that could be a factor. You'll be fine. 
I believe you once told me you could raise a helmet with a rock if you had to. <laughs> Let's go. Find me a rock. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of snow. <laughs> This thing? Yeah, this steak is beautiful. I don't know what I need it. Yeah. But you want it. What do you think? Yeah. The handle's a little better. The one face is on the bigger side. It's not crazy aggressive. Yeah. Wait, I think you're right, and the results are showing that a little bit. What? Wade's saying that uh, the little tink, tink, tinks at the end, you're kind of impromptu planishing. The, this one works a little bit better than that, than that one for that. You get a little yeah. bit deeper marks yeah. from the quote-unquote raising hammer. Yeah, but his uh, handle. Tom Builder is on his way out, it looks like. He's going to be back later Goodbye. for the dramatic conclusion. Dun 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 Oh wow, yeah, the asymmetry is was pretty dramatic. Well, I'm not sure you can avoid it being that to some degree. Yeah, but it's not a here time to raise a helmet. Step by we step. Discuss all the aspects. My cable is a mistake. Uh oh. Yeah, this, uh, no, none of us had any idea this is going to happen either. Maybe a vague inkling, but we pretty much figured it out last night. Yeah, we had so we're like texting last night, maybe like seven even. We're like, so we're doing this? Is this going to happen? I bet, yeah, I bet it wasn't until at least seven o'clock last night that Eric was like, yes, shop is available to do something. <laughs> yeah. So, very, very short notice. When we were figured we were actually going to finish our other project in time. Party. <laughs> yeah, that volume or that length is really being pulled down in front, eh? Jacques, uh, it'll be the one without the tail. Where he's holding the tail, that's the back. There's the back, and there's the front. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's the front. This <laughs> lip is on the side. Yes. And I guess, was that the center? No, that's just a random. Spot. When it was flat, or we don't really know? Well, that's pretty close to the center. Well, in front of that mark. 
Like, the, where's that? Soap's going to go. Uh, Jacques, the tail is, uh, if you look up an armet, they have the tail in the back that sort of bridges the gap between the cheek plates when you enclose the head. That's probably center of the circle right there. Let's see. Oh, we're going to get into a endless loop there, but I don't know if I can find a good picture that includes the tail on the skull. Oops. Yeah, so Jacques, you can kind of see in this picture, I don't know that I have a better one, where the cheek plate comes up and ends right there, and the tail of the skull bowl goes all the way down. Yeah, I don't have a shot from the back, I don't think, but hopefully that gives you an idea. Ooh, it's gonna be a big one. Eric says, hi, this is cool. Eric gets in the chat and says, hello, this is the cool thing you guys are doing. Thanks, Eric. Front section is starting to look very volumetric. I just got distracted by noticing this very cool visor hanging in the back of my shot. Wow, that's a really nice one. This photo says you pay attention to Patrick. I wonder if I have a screenshot button on here. Jeez, look at you go. <laughs> yeah. We can get the front what view that kind of shows doing? the contrast. The side he's working on, the side that's being worked on next. That's about level. I'm really thinking I'm just gonna leave that half. I'll just get this really pretty close. <laughs> that Eric did that. <laughs> yeah, that's only fair, one half each. So are you gonna wanna like let that cool now to work on the other side so you can hold that or? I'm gonna bump the middle up. Okay. Just give us a little bit of a crown. A little bit of heat? Yeah. Not that you wanna take a break, but you gotta work that side, right? I don't know. Not yet. You can do whatever you want though, can't you? For real, we can finish out that side and just ignore the other side. Yeah. But you have this really dramatic step there where it goes from... Yes, to that could be difficult to navigate. To Eric says no shortcuts.
Sounds like a perfect soundtrack. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that too, Wade. What? Wade says popping it up is going to thin it a little bit, but that's going to be towards the back at this point, so. Not enough, I care. No. Not my helmet. <laughs> Careful now. It's someone's helmet. Wait, Eric wants me? <laughs> Always. Just a little pop. Wade says he lost about 10,000 doing that. What? Wade says he lost about 10,000 doing that. I mean, 0.07 is still pretty good. Were you doing more than that, Wade? I was gonna say, I oh, hi, Olivia. I moved it like that much up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys can kind of see here a little. You can see the part that he's popping up is still untouched sheet. There's not a hammer mark in there. Yeah, I mean, I just barely cracked the scale on it. We'll check, though. You want to check now or you want to like uh, let me know if you're gonna no, I'm gonna bump back. cool that really did help ease out that curve is that the steak underneath or a thick spot Oh, the steak. I'm used to my buckets where there will be a random thick spot like that. Slightly dished, we would already have kind of that curve there. That yeah. Trying to do, so. I'm not scared. That did feel like work, though. We need my power hammer for that. I got the dies for that. But I suppose changing out those dies would also be work. Do what? Nothing. I'm just talking to myself. No, you're talking to the 24 people that are following you. Oh, Wade asks, if you can do that, why not just bash it all the way out like that? That's a great idea. We should. Yeah. Well, that's how I do it. <laughs> it's just got to start a little thicker. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I got to get in a minute. I got to let it cool off. I'm going to throw in the snow and then I can play with it. Well, let's just jump straight into the thickness gauge then. I want to know, inquiring minds. You think I can reach? Oh yeah, plenty of reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to arrest that in there. Yeah, I might need an extra hand here. Here, wait. He had a vice. Oh yeah, if we clamp it in this vice. Well, I was going to clamp the helmet. It's hot. Oh, that's a fair, fair point. We kind of melted this one at the forging, trying to measure a full hot bucket stack in a very unwise manner. Hey, that's one, that's one. Okay. Okay. All right, you want to do this? I got the camera. Okay, I should replace that dial indicator, but it still kind of works. I'm going to aim for center. This is center of the original skull. You got to kind of wiggle it till it drops yeah, to its lowest to find square. I mean, that's still 80. That hasn't moved, yeah. 
Not from just okay. the... I'm bumping it back to where we stretched it a little bit. Oh. Got to find that low... Oh, man. Oh, yeah. No way. That's like... Oh, you missed it. Stretching. You lost a couple thou, maybe. Uh, 80 to 79. Yeah, that's very minor. This is this guy can be tricky though finding yeah. that square so you get the Yeah, we're still right there though. Hmm. You see? You don't trust me? Well Okay, I'm gonna hold the camera, we're swapping. This guy doesn't trust me. Huh. Well, that's getting me pretty 80. Maybe well, are you up there on that I was bullet focusing on the line. Sorry if the camera's going wonky. I was trying to see what the heck what he was the doing. Heck? How is that possible? Well, he said it was 81 originally. I mean, the writing on the sheet itself says 0. .080. Oh, I okay. didn't measure it. I thought he said it was 81 when he told us, but... Huh. I mean, it's sitting at 80, 81. 081. Uh, you know what? I'm going straight to the original sheet. May or may not still Yeah, be. let's see. The obvious question from the peanut back gallery would be, wow, if you can do that one. Okay, you already read that. Sorry, I'm catching up. Okay, yeah, well, that's uh, 0.081. Okay, so the original sheet started at 0.081. Mm, yeah. Well, thereabouts, I mean. It's, like my anvil and thing on yeah, there is like. There may be some. Not very precise, but <laughs> maybe within a thou or two. We're, we're talking pretty close stuff still. I yeah. mean, it hasn't stretched any significant amount that anybody's no. going to notice or cry. No, most like one or two thou. Let's see. <clears throat> you know, there is a chance I'm going to feel this tomorrow. What? No, we'll just keep going. So, <laughs> that way I don't. <laughs> yeah, it won't catch up with you. I mean, it's, it's one of those. I'm not as young as I used to be. I might need some motor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have uh, ibuprofen in the car. That's cool. I can chunk it in the snow again. So cool. I took my earplugs out and now everything's loud. <laughs> oh, it's not even warm anymore. You want to lick it? Yeah, let's get in there. <laughs> yeah. It's still a little warm. It's hardly even steaming though. No. Hmm. There we go. Not bad. Ooh, tail's still on. It's not even melting the snow hardly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's gonna be slushy on the drive home. Oh yeah, that thought had crossed my mind. If we could put a damp cloth on there or something. Why? Oh, you're right. I prefer to forget about it and then bump into it or lean on it. That's weird. Yeah, that's a little toasty. It helps hold the heat while you're working. You're right, it does. And that's why you're in charge. All right. <clears throat> that counts as your paid 15. You can put some tunes on. I'm we'll really get this thing rolling. Just ignore everyone. Hmm, the steak oh, is drying out this out pretty quickly. Which is what? What? To impress all these fine people. <laughs> I think I've gained two people that wanted to be my friend off of uh, Eric's announcement. Oh. I'm like, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't post <laughs> anything beyond this probably for quite a while. I don't have any interesting projects. Uh, oh, you could just post brass rails. <laughs> we could do that as the next live stream, teach everyone how to make brass rails. Looks about helmet shaped to me. 
Now, what are you thinking? What's your plan? I'm gonna pull some more down that way. Okay, and leave this side. I'm still not, okay. I'm not touching. You're not worried about that. I can do that side. Yeah, I could see that right there. Yeah, I'm gonna try and tuck that tail down around a little more. Because I mean, this yeah. was the center of the circle. That's yeah. It started. Just so for. I pulled this way down, but I haven't pulled that way down. But it's also one of those you can kind of shift. I could just pull this around more. Right. To kind of reorient everything. Funny. Yeah. You want me to re-mark that mark just for the sake of science and laughs? <laughs> Gonna make an angry face. You said you went to art school? <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I didn't want to brag, but... I like it. <laughs> what? Remember, kids, always wear your safety glasses. Safety squints engaged. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, ours is coming up pretty e even so far. Jacques, did you see some of our earlier checks on the thickness? We've gained a touch here and there. Haven't really lost much. What? I'm talking to, the, to Jacques. I mean, if you don't stretch downwards, then it just thickens, right? I want to be involved in some conversation. Mm, sorry to disappoint. I'm going to have to put on music, aren't I? But uh, our max thickness so far is maybe 0 0.09, 095. So we've gained maybe like 10, 15 thou in just some places here and there, which is not a ton. I don't know if you saw uh, Eric's chip from earlier. Oh yeah, this one, where uh, he got to like seven mil from a two mil starting point. So we're not going that crazy with the thickness. Oh, I missed it. Oh, you finally did do the butt crack. What? You did do the butt crack after all. Can, if you can picture it, but the way he got that thickness was he had a huge pucker, kind of like that, that had accumulated, but much, much bigger at the forehead of his piece and just pushed it all back into itself. And it came out like huge, huge.
Team effort, I'm trying to stay out of the way. Yeah. It'll be fine. I have total faith. After that? After that. What? But you, but you just cooled it. Break time. Yeah. Pizza time. Pizza time. Okay. Looks tasty. This is on the tripod. Uh, tripod. Well, wow, that's all dressed. And the one, the one, the other one is just cheese. Uh, I don't eat meat. Are you cheese? Hmm? You cheese? Yeah. I try not to eat too much of it. Yeah. I agree this. Yeah. Actually, I'm I'm uh, amazed that my battery's still going. Oh yeah. You can always plug it in as well, right? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. It doesn't give me the battery life, but oh, oh boy. All right. So we'll see who eats better. All right. Slowly rotate them. 
on a table, which 100% works for some incomprehensible reason. Have you ever tried that? No. I seen it on TV. And I was like, that can't work. So what did you do? You just set it down like this, and you slowly turn it, a couple of turns, okay, and then it somehow doesn't fizz up when you open it because of science, I guess. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna try it right now. Good to try. I don't know. Boy. Yeah, I'll try it from over there. <laughs> yeah, we we'll get a blast shield. All right. Uh. That would have been kind of cool to showcase your armor calipers in this, right? Because they're much smoother to have like a thumb thing. Like, oh, oh, oh. Well, mine doesn't. <laughs> oh, I didn't put one on the oh. prototype. I guess that was the max, right? No, oh, man. Wow, my battery is... Uh, it doesn't have acne or metallic stick inside because it was one that I cast as a prototype. Mm. My battery is at 40%. That's not bad at all. Wow, it's, it's been running for 200 minutes. Yeah. All right. Thumbs up to Apple. They actually were saying the truth about that battery. <laughs> all right. Okay, so let's stop. Let's slowly turn it. Well, we might not work it. Oh, it probably works. Let's see how it goes. Better work. Maybe again. I'm trusting you, Josh. All right. All right. This came down the staircase. It looks pretty hard. Maybe you could one more turn like that. Another turn? Yeah. Nice and slow. Maybe it's making it worse. <laughs> okay, let's try it. So they can stare at the random lumpy ball shaped piece. Yeah. It's really turning out today. <laughs> so 16 inch is pretty about right for but this will fit a guy with 23 and a half inch circumference on his head, so 16 inch is pretty dead on. We'll see once we get it pulled around a little more. I think we'll have a more than what we need. Yeah. That's exactly what we need. 
that's interesting because once you have that information, it helps cut down on time. So, you know, the less metal you start with, the better, you know, and less work. Uh, so uh, all that extra metal you don't have to spend yeah. time on. We were doing some of the math about that on the way here. Like uh, the difference in metal volume from an 18 inch circle versus a 14 inch circle. Something like. Is that what we did? 14 to 18 or 14 to 16? I think we did 18 to 14. And 14 is like 30% less material than 18 or something like that. That's right. Yeah, so 30% less material you have to move around. Yeah. So the number of diameter increases exponentially for the area. Well, yeah, the guy who always put extra metals just to be sure. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but if you do enough of them, you kind of cut that down, right? But armlets in one of them, like I said, I need two or three armlets since I'm picking armor, so yeah. I need a lot, a lot more salads than the yeah. armor. Everyone loves a good salad. But, uh, with these guys, I feel like I always they always come out just a little bit shorter than I wanted. So I'm like, I gotta start okay. overestimating a little bit more. So when you start, you start with a half inch plate. Mm -hmm. So it's a round plate or a square plate? Round, right? Round. Yeah, maybe sometime I'll get into the square, but mm -hmm. but I think really it's not like with the from historically, you'd be doing it from a bloom, so it would just be like a bulbous, amorphous kind of. It could go anywhere. It wouldn't, there'd be no reason for it to be square, yeah. right? The Vienna guys are doing that because they're just cutting it from old ships, so like it works, you know? But at least back in the time of that video yeah. or whatever, but from a bloom, it's like vaguely in that shape. <laughs> oh, wow, I would love to, to see how they actually did it in mm -hmm. 500 years ago. Yeah. But like I said, man, you have that. These, they probably have guys do specializing, in, you know, each yeah. piece for sure. Yeah. Well, that's what I would do if I had the budget and the means. Well, I know in uh, a lot of the uh, German armoring towns, like in the Guild Rules, you had to take a mastery test for like each individual component. You're like, oh, you want to make gauntlets? Okay, you're a master gauntlet maker. Now, if you want to make something else, you need to test for that separately. Or sometimes you could do the test for the whole thing at once, but otherwise it's just the well, separate pieces. That's why you're that's not the guy now. You're legally, legally not allowed to make comments. That's probably how they would. Uh, well, that's how they they would you know they, they would put put out all this amount of crazy amount of armor. Yeah. But you know there, there was a high demand for it. So. Yeah. Just make the same thing all day every day and get really fast. I've been, I've been making some production like blacksmith tongs. I feel like my process is pretty dialed in, but like every time I make them, they just go a little bit faster. I was like, I didn't think they could go faster, but it's come out a little bit faster. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you do it. There are some pieces that I'm getting better at. If I do a, a the other day I, I did like three pair half gauntlets, mm -hmm. I was doing it for a heart. And you know, when you do a bunch of them right once, right after the other one, the mm -hmm. last one, just you just go like that. Yeah. But you still have to go through the process mm -hmm. of being able to go quick. You know? mm -hmm. Like the guy who's called in to repair a big million dollar machine, something's going wrong. Hey, come in, you gotta you gotta repair this. The guy comes in, takes his armor, put it against the machine, he listens, listens to it, and then takes the armor and says, talk. Boom! The whole thing is fixed. <laughs> Turns around, tells the guy, tells, tells the guy, all right, it will be ten thousand dollars. What? <laughs> you just tapped it with your hammer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I just tapped it with the hammer, but it took me a lifetime yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to charge that when it's the million dollar machine. Yeah. It's hard to charge people for that for this kind of thing. Well, armor is, a, you know, yeah. being an armor is one of the hardest oh, things to do if you if you make a living out of it. Yeah, we were talking about this. It's always like, for me, you know, I never got that far. I did some, but I've always felt like it's way too expensive for my customers. Some progress. Barely enough for me. <laughs> you can barely survive. Oh, is it uh, cutting out on up there? No, somebody asked.
Oh. If we were making any progress. He was like, last time I was in here, you were eating. And now I come back and you're eating again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. We need fuel. Jacques, you hear Jacques calling your uh, Canadian tour the pizza tour? Yeah. How many times did we have? You were at his shop eating, my friend Jacques, we were at his shop eating pizza like two nights ago, doing armor, <laughs> eating pizza. Yeah, but when we went with Donald, there was pizza. There was pizza. And there was one other time there was pizza too. It was like four times this Oh, he ordered pizza, pizza again another time, and then we had that for lunch again the other day. So you guys are getting real good at eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's most of my diet anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, but, uh, that's a good thing. We take, took time to eat because uh, I was hungry. Well, I don't know if you'd ever be interested, but it'd be great to get you out to uh, when we do the sledgehammer sometime. Absolutely. What we're saying about doing the same thing to try and get good, this is hard to figure out. So we're trying to get the same guys to do less every time and like work over time and then keep doing it. Because to be as good as the old guys, that we'd never be able to. But to be a little better than yeah. every novice is like, that will take time. Well, I do have a project in mind on how we're going to start. And that's visiting our world. Mm, okay. I'll make a video of it. I think I recall you talking about that 20 years ago almost. <laughs> 2007. Now, now yeah. is the time. Any day yeah. <laughs> this year is the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of, a lot of armors out there. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could come and visit you guys, but this is really intriguing what you're doing. So, yeah. The yeah. trick for me would be to actually finish a helmet so that I can show you like this is the end. I always get to about, you know, I get to the rough volumetric form and then I'm like, okay, try to start a new one. Never finish a helmet, but. <laughs> well, it's not easy to, okay, well, that's, okay, somebody's coming to film. All right, well, let's make 10 different steps of a helmet. Yeah. It's easy to do the video afterwards, but getting ready for it is like, whoa. Yeah. It's cool to see us all swinging the sledgehammers, but it's the same every time. You kind of want to see the complete. I see the guy in, uh, in Montreal Forge when they do it. There are like two or four guys do the all oh, yeah. hanging away. They do all these trade acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. got one of them. One of those are them. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice stuff. Nice axe. Yes, how many passes on the razor? Uh, one. <laughs> and this axe has a tempered steel in the cutting edge that was forged weld in there. He does the whole wrap. Yeah. Well, they, uh, they have the recipe now, how they did it. Because uh, in those days, everybody had a trade axe on them. It was the tool of the day. And I heard that one of the reasons everybody would wear these axes, this is a fairly large one, they had a smaller one. Because uh, the, uh, most people would live in wooden houses. So when the fire, if they were, the fire would spread out in the house, they would use these axe to go through the walls and to escape. Yeah. It was one of the, but still, these, uh, most countries were built with these trade acts. Yeah. Well, they new government for sure. And they used them just in this style for hundreds of years. And it's very, very sharp. Yeah. You can carve with it, you can split if you have to, but it's more for like, carving. Felling, felling, if you take down trees. Mm -hmm. very nice tool. It is. I'm going to. Burn the daylight. Still hot? Yeah. Yeah, me and when I started moving around, and further out, further out. Just like make it look like what you want it to look like and cut off anything that doesn't look like what you want it to look like. Yeah, yeah I cried myself to, to sleep sometimes. Why is it? Oh my gosh, it drives you crazy, right? <laughs> you look at the angle, you come in the next day and look from a different angle, yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah, well, that's not right. When you get to a point where 
Nothing is, seems to be working when I have to just leave it. Come back tomorrow. Yeah. Because sometimes you think you've exhausted all possibilities, and the day, next day you realize you, that you, you didn't even start it yet yeah. exhausting th those possibilities. Sometimes an idea will come to me in a dream as well. If you're having a stress dream, like, how do I solve this? And then you have an idea. You can wake up and you're like, wait, is that, does that work? Or is that just a dream thing? <laughs> I think maybe once or twice it was real, the other times you're like, that's not, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and it's like, why the hell did I do last night? <laughs> it's really Oh, I was reheating my pizza a little bit there. <laughs> oh. <sighs> okay, we're ready. I'm not really sure if I. You gotta, get, you gotta get pumped. Should we do Should a group stop. cheer? Uh, no, no, I won't. I won't uh, he's asking me if we're gonna get a, a hydraulic press. Nah. But you can uh, show me your little vanishing hammer. Uh, I've got a vanishing hammer, but even then, I don't really use it. In my case, well, I discovered that each time I would dream of a machine to go faster, I ended up doing it by hand anyway. You know, it's hard to be, and then again, it depends on you, what you're doing. If you're making a living out of it and you're produce, mass producing uh, stuff, I go for it. You get, get machines. But in my case, you know, yeah, I would try it, but it's like, like my planishing hammer I have there, it took me 10 years to really use it. Mm. And I still don't reuse it that much. I will use it. When I'm doing a, a start of project, I don't want that mechanical feel to this plate. I don't want a nice plate just like a yeah. tube. I will planish it, the whole plate, and then I will form it. Yeah. Just yeah. to take away that mechanical yeah. feeling that it has. Armor is such an organic shape. You don't really have clean geometry like you get from a machine. You want to make a perfect atmosphere of like a car fender. Armorsmith has a nice it, but the, the hydraulic stuff. I don't I, I, I know what he does. I haven't seen much of it. He does a lot of cool stuff, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Does he do like uh, like an armor shaped form? And right, he has all these crazy okay. forms and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that, yeah that he, cool. he, When he started doing uh, raising, it's a Ukrainian he, type? Yeah, he puts, yeah, and now he's, I think he's, he's been drafted. Now he's in the war. Oh, jeez. That suck. Yeah. And uh, he does it with his hydraulic press, and he has all these waves. And then he comes in and oh, takes away that wave. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you could do, especially, yeah, because they're maybe doing a little bit more volume as well. Of, like, I don't know. Volume of armor, making more pieces. If, I don't know when he takes up all those waves, if it changes from where there's no wave. Mm -hmm. Is the thickness stays the same? Something must change. Yeah. yeah. But then. those ripples in there? Hammer the ripples into themselves, you're going to end up with thick and thin and thick and thin. Yeah, so we kind of saw that with your gauge and your yeah. middle version there, where we had 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.08. Huh? How come? Are you on the Wi Fi? Yeah, I think it's a region thing or something weird. I don't know. You said no. All right. Well, I'm so sad. I was trying to put on music because you guys keep talking to yourself and talking to them and nobody's talking to me, so I was going to put on some music, but it won't let me. Gee, I didn't. I never <laughs> thought that. That, that was so real. That's the thing as well. I'm huh? feeling a little left out here. You just got to waste more of your time watching armor videos on the internet. Yeah, we're Instead trying. Of having a job. We're trying to come this way and that way to take it easy. <laughs> Turns out it's pretty, it's harder than we thought. Yeah. Well, he's been making me work hard all week, so. <laughs> right, well, where, where was that, uh, that job? So we're down. What's the, what's the address? Uh, it's in uh, Middle Saint Laurent. It's like at Cobra, Cobra 2 exit yeah. on Highway 40. Is well, that's, the, sorry, that's where the shop is. The house is in Westmount. Okay. Like Cedar out, like the boulevard of Cedar. That staircase is a private house? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's crazy house. Yeah, I thought it was the National Park or something. Yeah, no, no, private house. It's a little weird. Alright, I'm ready. Your plug's engaged. We'll see how long that lasts. The 
This is not normal for me. Do what? So see how long I last. Well, you're better than me, as I can tell you that. So, okay, we got people, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure, I think it's Russian. Or Ukrainian. Or Ukrainian. But we have a different alphabet. <laughs> Stop speaking. Work. <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't know if there's new music in it where you get this. Get to uh, YouTube jail. Yeah. YouTube oh, yeah. jail. Yeah. 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 Ready? What are we doing? Uh, something with a hammer, maybe. I think I ate too much pizza. Siesta time. We'll show them the other side. This side is the, the prettier side. All right. Wow. It looks like Look how far it's gone. He's almost it's done. Really nice side. Well, it's still pretty. It's still good. You know, I don't know. Maybe medieval I time wasn't symmetrical, so. <laughs> medieval time wasn't symmetrical, so. I'll pull this side down, okay? I'm not going to make you do this side. It's making me uncomfortable. You the other, okay? I need that side to go in, or I'm going to lose it. You, you don't like it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah.
back from the party. Fire and steel. Walking through the party now. Gotta fight for the right to party. Yeah, we need music. You need non copyrighted music. Yeah. We need public domain coverage. Alright, I'll be boring as hell, so let's forget about it. Well, after this, we can see that you. Using a different hammer. He was using this one. This one was starting to really irritate my hand. Sorry. Hmm. A good, uh, a good uh, an empty uh, piece hammer. A what? An empty, uh, since I did uh, it like that, nobody's yeah. gonna see it from me. <laughs> yeah. That's just an anti yeah, exactly the word I was looking for. My English is not always that uh, comprehensive. Well, it's much better than my French. But an arm is pretty, it is one of the quickest raising hats you can do almost, because it's, you know, it's, it's not that deep. Yeah, the sheets get pretty complicated, I think, in terms of the shape. Yeah. I've never made one. I have seen your video. I wonder if anybody's gonna watch the whole video once it's recorded. We're up at 226 minutes. Yeah. That's three hours, 240 minutes. It's like, you know, watching Lords of the Ring, the special extended yeah. version. Oh wait, that would be four hours of that. It's just incredible how it heats up a lot faster than that this way. I want more hammer time than heat time if it's all possible. That works well for the video. Well, it's gonna work well all the time now. <laughs> It'll be more expensive though, but... Well, I mean, you have to go faster, so it balances out. Yeah, yeah if you accomplish it. Time isn't free either. Alright, this is a night shift. One of those, I'm a little rusty, a little out of practice here. Patrick, your rustiness is greatness for others. 
what's called the humble brag. Yeah. A nice raising steak. <laughs> Very nice. Do I need to use that? Is that my job? I need to use that one at some point? Yeah. I really find I've fun. never done a whole raising on my big ball. portion of this is guys yeah, gonna be too tight to match yeah so that's why I was kind of curious to see what other stakes you had hmm. yeah well, I need an off-center ball yeah I've been thinking about it for the last 10 years yeah one day one well, day you'll decide to do it I'm not like George uh, the, the, the French armor he's up to his 150 raised hat that's just crazy. Wow. How many have you raised? Maybe 30? Maybe. May oh, even less than that. How much? I doubt 30. No, I, I bet I haven't raised a dozen hats. I might, may, maybe 20. Maybe 20. I wonder, uh, Kevin Legg, he, in, you know this guy, Kevin Legg? He's yeah, the fastest big, hammer English. of the Europe. He's yeah. supposed to be really fast. Okay, in Europe, you did stipulate, in Europe. Yeah, okay. but he was... Ooh, we, I guess we just hit a nerve, a yeah. sensible, a sense of nerve. I think they said nerve. he did two whole ones in a 24-hour period. Oh. What? He what? He did two in a 24-hour period. Two helmets. Two helmets. I might be wrong, we'll have to ask Wade. Wait a uh, Yeah. I could be, maybe it was 48 hours. Kevin, if you're out there, we need confirmation. <laughs> He's that archery practice. Two hats in 24 hours? That seems fast. That's, that's just crazy. <laughs> Hopefully it was 48 hours. I think I'm going to outsource. I mean, this one was not consecutive. I think it was consecutive. You're not running 48 hours of armor. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, like I think he's blessed. Like did like two 12-hour days or something. It's more than blessed. I think, I think he's an archangel or something. Yeah, I want to know what kind of hats, too. That makes a big difference. I want to say kettle hats. Does he drink Mountain Dew? <laughs> I don't think it's common. I don't think it's common in Europe. Out of my way. Well, Rudolph, maybe one day you'll be able to join us, or maybe I will bring the coolness to you. We got Rudolph in France, who we would very much like to be playing with us here. Can you imagine like 10 different lives going on at the same place? Yeah. And crossovers <laughs> and shit? Ah, that's, no, that's too crazy. <laughs> all it takes. Throw yeah, well. You can get us all to come play. It's yeah, we should, we should get, the, you know, a rich patron that really, really likes looking at people making armor. Well, in Quebec, there's a lot of grants, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, you talked to Jacques. <laughs> yeah.
So we're, maintain, we're maintaining about 23 odd people following us all the time. That's cool. I'm glad that all you guys are there. It's a pretty damn long live. <laughs> we're up at 235 minutes so far. Click on the link to donate to make more yeah. videos, but we don't have any links and no, we don't. doesn't pay us. We didn't really think ahead. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're poor armorers. You need to figure. We're poor armorers, but we're happy armorers. And what? We're, we may, we're maybe poor hammer, uh, armorers, but we're happy armorers. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yes, we do. Fun is our middle name. Starting to look good. I got to put somewhere. Oh, yeah. Put it in your pocket. I save it for later. <laughs> well, you want, we could cut it up and weld it back if something. Hey, that would save some time. Yeah. That would save some time. You know what? The middle aged armor would have probably used a welding machine. Yeah. A little Yeah. yeah. You'd probably be able to conquer Europe with a welding machine. Yeah. If you find the shielding gas. Or the electricity. <laughs> it's just a detail. Ah, good beer. Mm. Very thick through here, but pretty thin through here. Not thin, but goes up to about an eighth of an inch there. Will make it easy to grind. 
when I clean it up. True. Are you going to do it with a, a rape or a, a foul? Oh, no. No? Oh, no. Ah, you're a short, short cutter, huh? What? You're a short cutter. Well, I don't have a water power grinding mill, so I figured an electric grinder is the next best thing. And we're doing this with a file. Yes, Rudolph, that'd be great. We're gonna work on something. We're working on a project. Everything is there, you just have to do it. I got Rudolph saying uh, it'd be great to have five or six armorer, like historical workshop, and do the helmet in two days. I can do this in two days. Well, you we saw our striker team video, right? Someone else do that. Yeah. The kids are I mean, why is there for something where I know body if you can just pay somebody to do it? Yeah. Just get the help. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I say, hey, Patrick, let's do a great video, Patrick. Come on over. Let's show us how you do it. Yeah, we go up with George. Yeah, we know George is one of the quickest hammer in uh, France, at least, that's for sure. I'll bet. I don't know a lot of French armors, though, in France. Well, I know at least two. Probably two of the best. But I'm pretty sure there's other French armorers out there. Too bad Francois Larchevaque could make it. We had a great time with this Ooh, guy. Come from that side. There's a big lump there, right? Eh? Yes, Patrick is pretty damn fast. I mean, I, I've never did a raising the way Patrick is doing it. He's very fast the way he does it. In case you're wondering, I'm talking to people commenting. I'm just not talking to myself. Okay. I'm going to read the comments. All right. I guess I don't get a say, do I? Well, there's nothing bad about using press. You know, you use whatever tool that works for you. That's, the, that's what's important. So, you know, if you, if you have a press to do stuff and it works for you, well, great, use it, you know. There is no uh, laid out rule for this type of stuff. You use whatever tool you, you have at your disposal to do whatever you have to do. Yes. It's a pretty symmetrical. Yeah, now uh, yeah, that, that, that section here has accumulated uh, loose stuff. <laughs> we got to do something with it. Yeah. Uh, we know you can do it, Patrick.
Try it again. Try number two. Sure can. I say, Woody, I guess it's me. Yes, I can do that. Uh, my uh, my grip is uh, causing problems for for his delicate hands. Just not what I'm used to. I'm not used to this either. I don't think I have ever used one of these for raising. This this is the first time using this type of hammer for raising. I've got you're, one. You're freestyling. It sits on my rack and never gets used. <laughs> wow, that's a cool effect. Woo! Have we hit a million viewers yet? Yes, we're oh no, we're down to eighteen. I guess people have life more than we talk. They didn't want to stick around for the full six hours. Some of them are coming back. Well, I'll probably take the original video and cut it up. I'll take the first five minutes and the last five minutes. He's gonna try my big T steak. Oh my god. He's using my big T steak. Woo! I like it, I like it. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Wow, GM has been here from the start. GM. GM? I don't know, I don't know who GM is, but he's he's been there since the start. Thanks, man. We appreciate your support. We appreciate 
appreciate your dedication. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Hopefully you're getting something out of this because I don't know that I am. I am. Oh, he gets a free helmet. He does, yeah. He gets something out of it. Yeah, I'm getting knowledge and a helmet. It's a win-win-win situation. <laughs> I, I might have to request a cut of the proceeds here. Oh. It's not about the money. <laughs> Stop the camaraderie. Yeah. How to sucker people in to make your work for you? <laughs> hey, I will say, I'm glad we're not doing this for the whole four times. It's not in It's a lot of extra work. I would love to see Josh do it for the whole four times. Because when I do it, it's, it takes way too long. I'm messing with the fire and everything. Right. So that's another thing. You get good at doing the fire and then it's faster. Oh, GM says, it's a good way to learn. Great, man. We're happy you're learning. Who? You, GM. You? Glad you're learning? Well, I'm learning, oh. too. Oh. GM's been there since the start, and he's learning. Oh, okay. You guys waiting on me? What? Are you guys waiting on me? Uh, maybe. I'm talking French. Yes, it is my French accent you heard. stake kind of countering yeah if your ball stake is too small and you're trying to raise over it it's doable if you make sure you keep the ball where it's cold and you're yeah it. but otherwise it's just hammering it back up yeah. or you're hammering in yeah kind of counterproductive Ah bon, ah, euh, peut-être que j'essayerai ça la, la prochaine fois que je vais être rendu là. Even if it won't be messed out, and then one more punch on it will be close, so it's not the point. Like left and right. Whoa, not saying exact. I wouldn't say it's going to be perfect, okay? I mean, I see you over there judging you. I don't think you're supposed to be judging you. That's like you're always saying that it's good. No, no, no. It might not be perfect, but it's perfect for us.
I got a guy who says that Rudolph is saying that when he's at that part and he has that, he, he, he hammers the edge first and comes back up. He says that keeps the thickness in place. Yeah, it really captures the thickness of thickness. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm just getting rid of it. We don't need it. We don't need it. It's okay. We don't need no another way. hero. Alright. I gotta stop drinking beer. Who's saying they do that? What? Who's saying they do that? Rudolph, uh, he's a French armor. He just finished his new shop. He's got a great, a nice shop too. Yeah, I've definitely done that on many occasions to intentionally thicken the back hammer and stuff like that. But we're going oh. for speed here. Just get it done. You heard, uh, Rudolph? Uh, Patrick has done your way too uh, often. Yeah. Where are the games? Ben, Rudolf, il dit que. Patrick, il dit que il a utilisé, la façon que toi tu le fais, commencer du bord pour, pour barrer la, les, les passeurs en place, il utilise, il utilise souvent cette technique-là aussi. C'est juste qu'aujourd'hui, aujourd on est très pressé par le temps. Et puis, on n'a pas besoin vraiment de capturer la, les passeurs en place. I'm translating what you've been saying in English. Definitely lopsided from the top, but that's okay because next round we can start to like tuck it. Tuck oh, it it's wide. looking good. It's really looking good. What kind of depth are we going from edge to skull, edge to peak? What kind of depth do we want? Oh, you know, well, just, I'm I'm just know. I'd, I'd say between four inches. Between four and five, maybe four and a half, maybe. I was gonna say, look at the cell in there. Just from visor peak. <clears throat> maybe with the crest, even five and a half. Yeah. Mm. I think We're, so. Okay, there's the eyes, right? Yeah. Kind of looking at it. Well, I think the eyes would be like here. Oh, right here. Brown one. No, no, the eyes are right there. So in that case, yeah, maybe I was going low. Five, I think. Five is probably good to leave room for the crest. Because, yeah, it comes down and then it cuts up just a little bit, of, if I remember. Maybe a slight... Yeah, there's a little bit cut off. Not, yeah, yeah. Like behind here, it's slightly higher than this, if I yeah, remember. Yeah, like I, I have cut... Uh, there's some few pictures in Mantova that show them without the... Uh, just a the second. Uh, where is it? Uh, there it is. Uh, 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 where are they? What's the wait a minute? Uh, 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 that might be fine. Yeah, that was definitely more. Yeah. 
Just depth wise, just I think we're actually probably half quit. It's hard to judge. Yeah, I know. Super That's well, normal. but yeah, it's reading like almost five. Yeah, I mean, like if we pretend from there to there. I think that's where the extra material is coming in. Yeah, we're probably close to four and a half. So by the time you raise the shape down, it'll be... We're going to gain another half plus. Way over. Mm. I no, thought I had so one. We could see the cutoff. Side cut off. and a half, side to side. Yeah, well... I don't well, know. well this one see, doesn't really one. have one, but look. I know what you mean because... No, look, look. See, this line there, you can see how it folds a little bit. Like there's a... A crease line almost right along there yeah so this is coming around and then it scoops up you can see the distance from there yeah. to the brow yeah it's not right there you can see the edge of the fold i think i got one. Oh, there it is yeah i mean this one's slightly different with how that one's notched the other one like it comes in yeah it's angle. not square yeah oh. i love that curve around the back of the skull we'll get there with what? Ooh. Sure. Oh, it's Gaul, eh? Gaul is always on it with those top shots. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, I have access to his uh, page. Uh, I, I sent him a few bucks, so he helped pay. Like, he has to pay every month to keep that up. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, I sent in a, a few euros, and I have access if I want one month or a year. So, uh, and I'm glad sending him money. Like, let's go, man. Uh, yeah. Such a great uh, pictures. And yeah. He's got to have 10,000 pictures at least just in his oh, it's crazy. Thesis documents. I have oh, a yeah. pile of armor pictures and it's like six gigabytes. Oh, yeah. Half of it is just his. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's just crazy. I'm trying to think of what tool I want because you don't have the tool I have. Yeah, you can really see in the this top This is it view. for stakes, right? What? This is it. Yeah. For, I mean, a few there and these. Yeah. What are you, what are you looking for? Kind of like this, but I've got one that's much blunter. Like it's like that, that wide, rounded, but then about that wide with the curve. Okay, no. Kind of like that, but you know, kind of a nice No. Curve. But it's real good for kind of getting the initial bump for the ridge in without putting heavy marks into it. That's okay. We shall improvise. Yeah, I, I usually thinking. use that one. Yeah, and that's what I was looking at. That's what I was kind of thinking. Because it does have a nice shape. We can kind of bump it, right? That's a little out of the way, so that might work, right? Well, Rudolph is, le is leaving us and he's saying that uh, great work, Patrick. Thanks, thanks a lot. Check back later and see where we got to. Well, in France, it's about 10, 10 p.m. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, check in the morning. We might still be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be probably making the breastplate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I only have this one. Oh, you're going to start the crest just like for a reference point? Or? Yeah, I'm going to just bump down the center line, is what I was thinking. Just so I can kind of help work on some of the lines. Not a lot, just kind of keep us going in the right direction. Maybe. Okay. Close enough, right? That needs work anyways. Wow, uh, really getting there. <clears throat> yeah, and we want to start that crest before it gets too deep. Well, it's still a salad, so it never gets too deep. Yeah. <laughs> Not a salad, but an armet, I mean. But I do need another like this, uh, that's for sure. And I, I need one off center too. Yeah. Actually, I need a forge with a power hammer and That's forge my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've got a good 28-ton uh, hydraulic press, Ooh. which is good for squishing stuff if you want to make uh, steaks and things like that. Yeah, we'll exchange our uh, emails <laughs> yeah. for sure. I'm set up more for blacksmithing work than this. But... Well, that's interesting. <laughs> 
Actually, Jacques in uh, Montreal, he recently got a 75 kilogram air hammer. Does he have a, a web page or something? Yeah. Oh, we'll talk later on. That's great. <laughs> wow. Starting to get that little crescent there. So interesting. Totally not how I would do it. <laughs> what? That's what everybody did. It. No, Pat. Only you who's doing it like that. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> Let's see. Don't lick it. I see you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, you don't lick stuff. You just touch everything. So like, hey, that's hot. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> <Is that hot? laughs> Stick your tongue on it. Yeah. Could come back more here, eh? but I guess you have to bring it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that back in a little bit more, yeah. and then I'll start pulling that it's crease. That really nice. So now, side by side with the now that you have the start of the crest, are you gonna do what you were doing a bit more, or are you gonna start working right away on the outside? No, I'm gonna start working. I gotta pull the, this in more, but this kind of just helps me see my profile this direction. Right. So like, when you look at the profile this way, you can start to see you know, where that's got to curl around more. So yeah. this has to curl in more, and then the front has to curl in more. Yeah, but yeah. You can see kind of the center ridge, you know? Yeah, for sure, it helps it, you. It needs to bump a little bit more, I think, but then I can start working on the sides next to it. As well. I guess it helps you get your bearings as you go. Yeah. But that got hot really fast down here. As well, so that's why I was giving it a well, everything is getting closer and closer. Huh? Yeah. And your torch kicks out a lot of heat. I like it. And uh, that's why I use a lot of my vice grips. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I don't have to touch the, the, the fucking red hot metal. Yeah. 
I just oh, use it, tongs, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna I don't do, do as I'm much. Pump it once more along the top, I think, a little bit more, because that spot bugs me a little. Bit. I got my big mittens for heat, if you want. Right there on the, on the, uh, the kiln, the oven right there. The kiln? You guys keep trying to push stuff on me. No, but you know, you might, you know, that might not you burn your hands. Are offended by my light, delicate, uh, they just seem really, really thin. He's a rugged individual from the Lone Star State. Oh no. Doesn't need nobody. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, even if there's something, it's not. Even if it leaves a mark, it's it's not the. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I use them all the time when I race. So. I actually use two pairs. So one 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 gets too hot. I take the other one. Ringing? Yeah, I'm hearing a ringing. I wasn't maybe my earbud was just my earplug was backing out.
just for good measure, give it a slap. We're making a salad. Uh, whoa, wait a, what am I saying? We're making an armet. We're making a bird's neck, right? Yeah. Now, uh, King Blueberry wanted to know what we're uh, doing. He just came in. Turn it into a morion. But you uh, wash it, your dog's probably going to eat you, right? What? If I go use the washer, your dog's probably going to eat you, right? Yeah, it's just be really gentle. Go, go on the back. Yeah, all the way with me. Yeah, King Blueberry, we'll, we're making an armet. One that's in the Mantova collection, the B1. Sort of. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see what it looks like. Maybe we'll call it the B3 after. <laughs> wow, we're almost at 30, uh, 30 persons following us. We're up at almost 20, 27 people are following us right now. <laughs> 45 minutes plus a lot of minutes.
me where it seems deeper in the front than in the back. We'll bump it. We can cut it off. I'm pushing the metal to one direction for the most part. So we're going to have extra lines on there. I mean, if the extra length is in the sides and the front, it doesn't really matter. Once we get the curve and cut line and stuff, you know? Yeah. Oh, I just, I just discovered the zoom. Ooh, fancy. Now you don't have to get quite as close, which is probably for the best. <laughs> That's pretty damn close. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Keep rolling. Uh, well, we have a few comments, but right now, uh, important. <laughs> right now, it's pretty much uh, maybe everybody's having supper. Mm, is it supper? Depending where they are. Yeah, true. How many people across the pond? Any idea? Has everybody said where they're from? Everybody should say where you're from. Yeah. So where is every everybody from? Let's hear it. USA. What? USA? Yeah. Oh, I guess we're not in the USA, so. And, and you, what state is that? Nevada? No, that's NB. Mm -hmm. Northeast, maybe. Northeast USA. New England? New England, USA. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Southwest Washington State, USA. Nebraska. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Sorry. Patrick is from the Texas. Me, I'm from Quebec, Canada. Don't ask how I ended up here, I'm not even sure. 
He's running from the law. New Connecticut? No, yeah. It's NC New Connecticut, huh? North Carolina. North Carolina. Carolina. Sorry. like that, you can trap it and push it all back into itself, but that takes careful hammering and time. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, it sure does. I've done it. You can thicken it that way. You can keep your material that way, but it's like, I mean, that just, it just knocks out. You can just kind of push it out in one direction. Well, if you need to keep the thickness, it's a good way to go about it. Increase the thickness. It won't just keep the thickness, you'll increase okay. it, but yeah. We don't care. This will end up under the cheek plate of the brow reinforced anyway. Or it'll just get cut off because we've got a little bit of extra material still. Getting there. And then the front needs to come down a little bit more from the top. This half, you know, it's got a decent round. It's still a little broad, I believe. We have a check, really. I'm just kind of winging it at the moment. You've got Josh's art history there in the center. Yeah. Well, starting to look really, really good. I'll just show the guys the, the one we were looking at, the profile. Yeah. Well, this one is starting to look a bit like that. And the other one, too, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, I don't know where, it, where it's at. Where is it? Uh, nope. Ah, uh, we lost it. Wait a minute. There, it should be in here. Yeah. The 
it gives you, us a good idea of what we're going for the profile. Josh is on my computer in the, in the office and said, hey, you guys are getting any work done? No. Taking a small break, Patrick. Patrick's been hammering out for the last four hours now. Well, not four hours. Uh, yeah, four hours. Yeah, you said we started about noon. Yeah, we start about quarter to noon. You start hammering at quarter to noon. Oh, okay. So. And we stopped for a couple of bites of pizza, but that was a quick break too. We're at, at 297 minutes. <laughs> Don't you judge me for taking a break. Oh my gosh, you guys have been doing nothing this whole time? How'd it go? Getting there. Almost done. It's actually quite close. Yeah. Tilt that a little bit. Push that in a little bit. Or you just suck it Squeeze in. Squeeze around a little section. bit. What? Or you just suck it in this front side. That's right. Just took a break. Yeah. Cool. So your friend Jacques, is it Jacques Galin? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. He's, uh, he's wondering if we're still eating pizza. There's a little left. He wants a slice. Olivia. I it's don't know whose Olivia is. It's his daughter, but I guess he's watching along with him. Oh, ah, okay. He's trying to make sure that we're doing some work. How exciting for work. She saw how we were doing it last time. Not getting anything done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's usually just stomping on concrete floors all day, every day. No, I just, they're not that big, but they're no, just a little bit. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I bought like the, uh, the cheap workout mat pads. They sell them down there. Okay. Like hard to break. Yeah. And they interlock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, they're reasonable. Yeah. Cheap too. You get a whole pack of them so you can spread them out wherever. Right. I like these because they're heat resistant. And, uh, oh, that's a plus. Yeah, you don't want a lot of things on the floor. <laughs> you know, when you start working and all of a sudden your floor is on fire. Yeah, yeah. So I've got lines in front of my building machine and my leg where you know, you're yeah. doing a lot of repetitive stuff. I need to get a building machine in the way. It's just like uh, from the catalog, you know, like 15 years ago or something. I, I like one, but just a little bit longer. Yeah, I have a couple that are just a little longer than I made, but they were some of the first timers I made, so they're not that good. <laughs> I have one that is pretty nice. It's like a two pound, long, good faces, but the eye is like too much like this, so it has to wobble. You always have to whack it back in place, but yeah. it works okay. Well, we made this one, uh, the Montreal 4, but we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah. And it's way too thin. Same, mine's like that style, but also the eyes, like, that's what it does that. Yeah. A lot. I mean, yours does it too, but yeah, I made it kind of like that. I think it's better to squish it. We made this one, but it's just too thin here, so yeah. it, it's always wobbling around. Yeah. But Newer ones, I guess. I can use it like that. Yeah, give them a little bit like that. Yeah. That's what you need. You need a nice, uh, nice and deep neck section. That one's a little loose too, but it's not so bad. At Montreal Forge, what they do is they, they keep them in the water. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah. because the wood stays. Uh, I know. It uh, expands. I don't, I don't like that myself. <laughs> From what I've heard, though, when you stop doing that, it'll actually shrink down smaller than oh, yeah. what it was. Mm, yeah. And then you end up with. Yeah. You know, well, they always get some more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess if you always do. No. The previous guy at the shop I work at sometimes in Montreal, he did that. And then when he left, I just rehandled some of them and rewetched them. And it's like, don't do that. I guess it's the lazy <laughs> yeah. way of taking care of business. Yeah. This one I would probably just maybe put another wedge or drive it in a little more. Once upon a time, I thought I remember hearing somebody say they just they soak them in the oil for a while. Yeah, that's what I did too. It's a bit longer lasting than the water one, and it doesn't rust them up. But that's only if you care about it being pretty, which I do, because I'm very vain. I want to have pretty hammers. Wait a minute. Jacques is saying, I'm going to see how many punishment you get, you guys need for swearing. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, oh, is Olivia keeping track? Wait a minute. Is, is there young people listening to us? Uh-oh. Oh, uh, now we're in trouble. Uh-oh. What, what, what? Oh, I think some young ears are listening. Who is you? There. Oh, me. I never swear. Never swear before. I never swear. Well, almost never. <laughs> Rarely. Yes. All right, then. I'll, I'll, I'll be careful. Gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's from Olivia. We're in trouble. Uh-oh. Yeah. You, you should have warned us, man. You didn't warn us. Hey, this is your YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought swearing was in. Yeah, do people on our people still have to swearing? Mm. Oh, she's only nine. Wait a minute, I was swearing at nine. <laughs> okay, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, yeah, we could do that, but you know, we're a bunch of lazy armorers, so we have wobbly hammers. Yeah. I don't know how to do the flip between pictures in one. That's 
Uh, you know, my computer is like 13 years old, so it doesn't have the latest tech. Uh, asking about earlier for the cheek plates to fit against you can see over here there's a hinge so those flip up sideways oh you could show him uh, oh, there's the hinge and the deconstructed one yeah look at the you know oh there you go yeah that's a perfect one oh that's a great shot that's a skinny tail well they're all much skinnier than that some of the early ones were fat. Yeah. Like, I don't know about four inch wide fat, but they were fat. The German one, the really know. early ones. You're asking me questions about stuff I haven't thought about for years. Ooh, maybe we could spend some time speculating wildly what the rondelle on the neck plate is for. <laughs> it's a CD player. <laughs> yeah, I actually never, I never had a straight answer for that. No, I don't think anyone knows for sure. My theory is it's like a crumple zone. Like the post is supposed to, if you hit that, the post bends so that the neck doesn't take all the force. Yeah, but. the neck is so thin. Yeah, but, but why? I don't know. You'd think it would be hard to hit well, the neck. When you're being hit behind the head, you've yeah. been, you're in trouble for, you've been in trouble for yeah. a, a while. And unless they get dead in between the cheeks, a sh Sideways, so uh, hit the cheeks, before, yeah. like the back of the cheeks before it hits the neck. So. But if you hit just straight on that rondelle, then you just drive that whole piece. Right yeah, but back. maybe that'd be a tough shot because maybe the thing wants to bend easily enough that you can't really drive it straight. It depends how thick it, the how thick the neck is. I don't really know how thick they are. I, I I'm pretty sure it's a CD player. Right? Yeah, or satellite satellite radio. Yeah, it's a satellite like dish. A or it's maybe one of those things that had the foresight to just confuse future people. They didn't. Uh, it's like, what if we just did this? We all agreed to do this really weird thing, and people would be like, "What's that for?" Well, we can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's like how they got that camera inside the camera milk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, the 15th century version of that. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jacques says he makes good punishment. It sounds kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's Olivia who's uh, typing, so. Yeah. You hammering? I'm gonna hammer. All right, hammer it up. It's hammer time. You can't touch this. If you stop eating pizza and drinking Mountain Dew. Well, if you stop drinking Mountain Dew, he'll slow right down. <laughs> yeah, it's a ma it's magic potion. <laughs> Plus three armoring. Hey, I was going to say, when you're running on as few hours of sleep and many hours of work this week as you have, you need something. What have you been doing to, to get back to the hotel other than sleep? <laughs> I keep getting home and my cousins want to hang out. <laughs> Alright, everybody online, we want to know what's the roundel for behind that armet, uh, each armet has. Do we have a good picture? Yeah. Oh, they don't. Okay. Let's see. I don't know how Just go do. up or... Yes, people, keep asking oh, questions sorry. so I can take a longer break. Wait a minute. Oh, it's, it's, not... oh, it's in the... Why it's not working? It's going to preview, maybe? It's, uh, oh, or okay. can you, oh, you know tricks that I don't know. Whoa, how do you do that? Wait a minute. Most of the rondels I've been, oh, are not there. But if that's the real shank, it's way too thick for what I'm saying. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah. No, I, I You walk. can kind of see it, but it's not, yeah. Wait a minute. But it's, they. Oh, just oh, one, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's also one of those, how many of those have been replaced? Because I know there's yeah. some speculation that oh, most of them have. We do see it here. Yeah. I haven't studied them 
enough in to know. Great I really think it's a CD player. Also. Yeah, I would think it must be. Do they spin? Can you, you know, put some facets and spin them to, you know, detract people? Maybe. Uh, that's just crazy, Patrick. Yeah, you're being crazy. Yeah. I'm going to hit metal. Nobody's asking more questions. Oh, okay. It's, no it's pretty much Olivia on, on the Jacques account. All the words are mine, Olivia. <laughs> All right, then. We'll be careful. We will talk with graceful words. And we'll ask Patrick to stop swearing so much. Okay, GM saying I heard they were to protect an ad on face shield. Hi, Oscar. Well, here it's plus five. Is that un un unusually warm for this part of the country? I like this zoom. I just discovered how to zoom in. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Crazy. 
And, uh, and the quality of the image is pretty cool. I guess it's got high speed internet. Yeah. We're making an arm. Well, Patrick is making an arm. And we're just commenting and filming and, and doing stuff. I'm gonna do this, man! Get me! Alright. I'll go get another case of Mountain Dew. Nothing like our novel. Trying to figure out some of the comments. No, uh, Olivia is uh, have a watchful eye. <laughs> what are the comments? You both kind of went eh. What? Ah, uh, because uh, this comment. I don't know what that means. Stainless steel because I was just too lazy to keep my Inman from rusting. What's Inman? Yeah, what's that? What's that mean? Inman helmet, a person I would bet, an armor, Inman. We don't know what first Inman, Inman helmet. means, Jeff. I bet he's an armor. That's my bet. That's plausible. From... <laughs> I guess that's the place. Oh, okay, it's the guy who makes armor. Okay, all right. Next year. Yeah. Yeah, we're a bit slow, but eventually we understand. Yeah, we we'll get around to that eventually. It's a guy from in Texas. Jeff, what's he's basically saying, he's lazy and he doesn't want to keep his armor rough free. Yep. It's okay, we still like you. We just don't like stainless steel. No. <laughs> we hate stainless steel. Stainless is the devil's metal. Yeah. They're devil worshippers.
big lumpy things that keep getting in my head. Yeah, I, like I, don't I don't like it. How does it keep coming back? I don't know. I don't like it. Well, Oscar, uh, yeah, it can, it can be polished, mirror polished, or you can keep it rough from the hammer. It all depends uh, on who's buying it and what he wants. Again, sorry, Olivia. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Well, okay, if the guy doesn't hear my swearing, I didn't swear. Yeah. inches in diameter. What? They were asking the size of the ball, the steak ball. Big! It's about seven inches.
I didn't get that. I didn't hear what you said. Probably be the maximum. I put it at, I gave it an extra half inch to allow this for the crest. You're gonna push the crest in rather than out, right? Well, he's gonna bring down the the, the the two halves to get that crest up. Yeah, that's what I mean. So in the front to back, we gotta add extra for the crest because it goes past the widest point, right? There'll be more spacing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the crest at the forehead is almost not sticking yeah, out. But on the back of the head, it's quite pronounced still. Yeah. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, I just put it at like 10 inches as a result. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we gotta tuck that and tuck that. Yeah, so you're good. supposed to go. You're good ways, but it's getting there. You're too strong for your own good. It went well with the the pack in the house. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, I gotta let them go. Come back to that day. I had not seen the one before that's like that big. Yeah. <laughs> It's supposed to be a, a, a tiny baby? Yeah, it was really sick two, two weeks ago. Yeah. He stayed it. It was a... It seemed a little nervous. I'm a lot bigger than him, so... Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's good. Well, maybe we should we could cut that off. We can just cut that out. Yeah. Okay. And cool. let it take the ball. It's like magic. I don't want that hammer anyways. Can you forge the helmet with this on for head protection? Yeah, for heat protection. Yeah, the heat out. Yeah. Yeah, to lick it off. That's nice. And you cook. You do a lot of Hey, Jacques is offering... Uh, anybody wants a 7-inch diameter ball? You could do one for 800 bucks. Me at this point, I'd probably start working on this side. But that's me. I'm just going to be awkward and hammer sideways. Yeah, you look great, man. This one is very cool. Yeah, that's a small one, yeah. Ah, the other one is bigger. Oh, yeah. Straight out of Mighty Python.
Everybody else can sit down but me. Well, you, you can sit down if you want. We're just not moving. That's it's harder. Yeah. <laughs> you get to move your arm, so you know. <laughs> Keeps you limber. Yeah, it relieves it relieves you of your aching legs. Patrick, what do you do to relax? I make armor. <laughs> <laughs> this is his vacation. Yeah. I took a week's vacation. This is his day off. <laughs> day off? Nope. Sleep when you're dead. Which won't take too long at this pace. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Jacques is, uh, he cast a 30-inch, 120-pound tea steak last year. Wow. Like a dozen of them. They're Beautiful. kind of the size of this, maybe a little bigger. Oh, yeah. And cast steaks are good. I mean, uh, I yeah. I like yours. Well, it's, it's a, different, a different shape. But yes, yes. He's got a crazy alloy. There's some different alloy that he had done. You can ask him about it. Hmm. There's some, did some of them in ductile casts. And some of them it's some weird crazy album. Hmm. That style cast is pretty good. I mean, this is just mild stealing, right? Yeah. We're talking about some kind of heat treatable ductile cast alloy as well. Wow. Should be about right. So you got a little wiggle room, but you're well, you're circling the drain now. I mean, left to right, we're talking eight or seven and a half. Let me pull it off this real quick, just so we don't have to use our brains. 
<laughs> you can't check this really accurately, but because I only have the one side tucked in. So yeah, I can kind of. Eight should be plenty. Once, I, like, yeah, if I center it off the center line, right, you can kind of get a sense. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah, I mean, it needs to drop more from the peak and then pull in more on the sides. Yeah. But in terms of, uh, well, I guess this slope will actually be quite dramatic when you factor in the crest. Oh, I think it, oh, I think we need more Look deepness this here. This has to come up and yeah, this has yeah. to come down. Yeah. But that front profile is really like, Ooh, yeah. So like, that's gonna be like way down. Yeah. But I'm doing it on a seven inch ball. For sure, just to get the basic volume. But I Balls guess what I mean is like, the wall. From there down is not a huge amount, but then I guess. Yeah. Maybe we start uh, tucking in the, the skull. Maybe, maybe we could do a new kind of armament. Yeah. A new breed. <laughs> Well, we're up at 339 minutes. <laughs> hey, we figured if we did a live stream at our place, it was going to be just yeah. non-stop every day. Six hours is 30, 360 minutes, right? So we're coming up on it. want to maybe uh, use a little... You usually use a mallet or... <clears throat> Okay, I got a question here. Here's a question. What style of helmet would you recommend a novice blacksmith to, to try making as their first time project? Spangin helmet. That's the answer. You heard it, a Spango helm. It's early period, it's multi-piece. You do a little bit of dishing, sinking, you yeah. do some riveting, you gotta pay attention to shape and form. You learn some valuable fitting lessons. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of my first helmets. I, I started making Spangle Helm, so. Yeah, that's where I started as well. My first one was very heavily. <laughs> as is tradition, I think we all start there. My first helmet was a 10 gauge SCA piece of junk helmet that the guy wanted me to pound out and have the house. Right, you were doing it a uh, production on your first go. It was like, here, make five helmets and you get to keep the crappiest one. <laughs> And then he gave me 10 gauge plate. And we were cold dishing. <laughs> Thus, the ringing in my ears after a little while. <laughs> Good times. I'm gonna work the back. Yes, sir. I don't want to touch that side. I might just leave that there. If you ever want to use it, we can put it in the in here in the vise and bang on each side of it. Just saying. Yeah, you just saying. Just, I'm just, just saying. saying. I'm contemplating your offer. Well, I put it in that vise. I put the helmet all over it, and I just. Work on each side, at least it get me started. To kind of switch it to, towards the crest, like, yeah. Okay. yeah, because if you look at it, it, it really, yeah, woof, go long, long all of this is going to have to come, come way down. Yeah. There's also this one. Yeah, it's a little radius comparison. So the center of this has almost the same radius. Yeah, it's got that flat spot, but it's then it'll tall. give you some more access to the ground. Is that what you're thinking? What? Huh? What's this one? Uh, That's three and a half. Three and a half. I, was gonna say, yeah. I don't think we can touch this one. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Let's this one's pretty hot. <laughs> Wait a sec. Six, eight hundred degrees at least. <laughs> oh, I ain't touching that. Yeah, it's on the hot side for sure. You 
should do like, you know that old show, Kung Fu, with yeah. uh, David Carradine? He had to pick up that bucket <laughs> with, his, uh, with this part of his arms. Oh. And, then, like, and he would have that uh, dragon uh, burn yeah. into his forearm. I saw that in the Chris Farley movie, Beverly Hills Ninja. Well, they took it from uh, Kung, <laughs> Kung Fu. I heard they're remaking that show. Oh, yeah? What do you need? Do you have two pieces of something about Yang Wong and about that big round that we can hold on either side and then tap it, lift it out carefully and set it down? These are like rated for high temperature, specifically. Cast Yeah. Down. Yeah. This oh, one's melted a yeah, I use those for uh, when I'm working with the kin, the, the kin, kin, whatever you call it. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, where's my end game here? It's going to work. All right, I'm trying to get that in. Balls off. Loose. Ready? What am I going to do? Get out of my way. I thought you were going to sit behind you. Set down there. How'd they do? I'm, I survived so far. I felt a little heat. But nothing, really. But yeah, I'm good. Nice. Because I'm not waiting for that at all. <laughs> now you tell me. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was great. Nah, I it with me. Oh, it's okay. I'll try it over there.
big templates pattern. So it's just like, okay, I mean, I guess I can kind of. <laughs> like, okay, oh yeah, let's just say we don't have a bunch of patterns and drawing and measurements. And Felt like you had some kind of satisfaction. I'm still excited. I mean, you're having all the fun, but we can't let Josh get too bored here. So, if we're looking at the profile, I feel like, are we going to be missing some material here? Alright, I didn't I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Should be at least six inch long, I think. Do what? At least six inch in length. Oh, the width, that was one. Oh, the width. I'd say around two and a half inches.
Needs more curve. More curve. Needs more back curve. Yeah. Hey, I'm just gonna get it close, right? Oh, well, it's mostly down at the bottom. Well, there's more at the top. But uh, on that picture, the helmet is just turned a little bit on. I think it's this. also shot very close up with yeah. more lens. No, we don't have to finish it today, huh? You know that. So we're so close. This side looks much more appealing than this side. But still got a lot to say down there. Wonder if this will work. Yeah, it, it, it go in that one or the other one there, but this one uh, there's a piece broken off, so it's, oh. it wobbles. So maybe that one it'll be up high enough. Is there another small ball? No, you don't have a slight a small ball. Oh, an offset. That might work. That one will go, yeah. But that's kind of short too. Put it on the other side. So we have more uh, space. Or what? Can it go in that one or is it too small? No, it's not any. Because it goes up higher. Oh, this one? Yeah, don't put it there. I'll try it. I still got to tuck in that whole stupid side. See, all that crap still has to go somewhere. You need to come up more there too? Yeah. Just a little bit? Yeah, that, that's why I was looking for a slightly smaller ball because it'll allow me to focus it right yeah. there while I tuck that at the same time that bump, so I'm kind of doing both. So yeah. yeah. But, uh, but uh, like I say, it's okay uh, if you, uh, we don't uh, do it all today. I mean, I'll Everybody's finish it off bored. later on. Everybody's getting bored. <clears throat> no, it's for you, man. You're the one doing all the work. <laughs> It's a lot less flatter than when you started, that's for sure. That's a little bit more so, volume. I need to do this side on the big ball, though. You want me to set it up? Balls to the walls. Um, I just think if I'm going to touch that side, that would be a better way to do it. Okay? It is. We had it in the end hole, though, right? Oh. Yeah. It's super tall, so you want to go with it. Biggest one you can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Careful. 
CrossFit. Don't hurt yourself. Okay, let's see on the other side. See, so you're doing something. Yay, thank you. We got the steak. Okay, then. Okay, we'll tuck in the other side. And then we'll see what, we feel, what I feel like. I don't care what you guys feel. Hey, we got the most volume, though. Well, we've got the volume, but it's just now tucking it. Because we've got depth. We've got front to back and side to side size. Right? Did you check the side to side? Oh, we're, you did, but I haven't tucked in yet. Oh, so we're, we're still see. wide. Yeah. Like, I think we're just a little wide front to back, and we're still significantly it's pretty right close front to back. But pulling the sides down the rest of the way is where we get it. Yeah. But let me do this. It'll make it look better. Everybody will feel better about it. Instead of what is this monstrous, hideous, horrible thing? I would call it monstrous, hideous, and horrible. <laughs> Maybe monstrous, but. Okay. Monstrous is charming. Charming? No. There is no charming. Charming and monstrous like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'll let you shoot a little bit. I gotta get the dog out. Okay, yeah. Nice, I get to sit now. Oh. We passed the six hour mark two minutes ago. Wow. What do you think, four more hours than we could call it? Or get an even 10? Yeah, I mean. It's a short day. Nah, I'm just joshing you. We can quit whenever you're ready. What? I'm just joshing you. We can quit whenever you're ready. Uh. You're right. Why would we quit? There you go. Even now that it's like you have to reach farther down than before, eh? But I guess the hammer height is still the same. That's just where I put that. This is fine. This yeah. Is good. I mean, it's a little high for blacksmithing, but we're not blacksmithing. Yeah, no, it's usually a little higher. I mean, maybe half this height would be appropriate. I don't know. Well, if you want, we could move the ball into the smaller hole. It would no. bring it up a little. I've been doing it this way all day. I will continue it to, to we quit. That's how things are done around here. We do what we do, even if we don't like it, even if we know it's wrong. Yeah. For me, what it is. Anybody watching wants to cry about that. I don't care. Go, Go ahead.
I wanted to get a closer look at this torch, but I have to hold this. Hey, who are you Carl, calling artistic? Uh, I'm on the spectrum anyway. Yeah. So it is easier to just kind of push the metal out of the way. Right. You would never. Kind of jam the teeth in all the way so when it tries to rotate it bottoms out 
Yeah, I'm trying to keep it on the edge. I realize we're trimming most of it, but it's not. Yeah, you're right. It gets a I'm little chewed to up. Keep it as pretty as possible for Eric. I say that, but you, uh, you do still see some marks on mine when they're finished out. <laughs> I don't know how much shows up on camera, but from that low angle, I can like see the metal dent from underneath and get pushed down. Remember the formula for a sphere volume? Something weird, right? Like one quarter pi r cubed? Four pi r squared, I think. No, it's definitely cubed because it's a sphere. The volume of a sphere. Four. Are you sure? No, I'm thinking surface area. Yeah. Surface area of a sphere is like four pi four r. No. Oh wait, no. Surface pi area would be. There's a four because the hemisphere is two. For surface area, yeah, yeah. I could see it being something weird. I'm just gonna Google it. Google it. Oh, it was in my head. hey, Wade's back. What? Wade's back. Hello, Wade. He says, looks like you've made a lot of progress. My reading comprehension is not great. A lot of nice progress while I was away. See, I can read a four letter word. Ta -da, ta -da. Uh, get a good shot, it's getting there. I think we're just pulling the sides nice in now. Yeah, this is all going to be excess trimmed. I'm not compressing in. I'm stretching. It's a little bad. It's been a while since we checked, but oh, orientation is locked. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Yeah, that's the, pretty much the straight front view. So we're just pulling in that side now. What? I said I might not, I didn't say I would. Well, we still gotta talk uh, about seeing what's up with Les Fauches. If we can go there. 
Also, maybe we could uh, have lunch with my cousins or something. I don't know if you'd be down for that or if it's weird. Yeah, that's a very good point. I got to lean into it is what you're saying, right? I got to lean into it is what you're saying, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how I operate. Jeez. Okay, I was just close, but it, it is something weird. It's four thirds pi r cube. Four thirds pi r cubed. Yeah, so 1.3, et cetera. Why do we care what the volume of a, uh, a ball is? Oh, I am just, that's for my own thinking. I'm like, what would it take for me to build something approximately like that? The ball stick? I want to know how much it weighs. I know the density, I know the density of steel, obviously I've memorized that like any normal person. I just yeah. need the volume. Yeah, okay. You just need the cubic inches. Yeah, 3.5 times Oh, okay. Oh, put it on a scale, but it's super hot and it's being used. I can do math. I'm talking to the commenters. Okay, let's see. According to my calculations, it should be around 50 pounds. I believe it. Sounds high. Wow, I'm really no, strong. I was thinking it might have even been higher than 50, I mean, plus the shank. Yeah, plus the shank, which is what, like inch and a half? Yeah. Tabernacle. see it being close to 60. Okay, I'll just assume my math is right for now and extend it to this. <sighs> Let's see. Just get the rough length of the oh. shank. Probably a good 10 inches by the time it Probably I could oh. use the right side of the measuring thingy. Yeah, if you factor in the, sh like the taper, it's probably like nine inches. Yeah. Sounds plausible. Call this. Whoops, sorry, no swearing. Yeah, seven inch ball. What do you guys think? Is my math close? Is a seven inch ball of steel about 50 and a quarter pounds? Plus five and a half for the shank. Well, 5.67. thinking that too, Wade. I'm just thinking if I can scheme up some crazy way to do it in my shop. I do have forges and presses and hammers, but I guess you need a big forge to get something in there. You need to 
find somebody that still has surplus rock and roll balls. Big yeah. I've seen them up for like 14 or 16. Really? Years. Yeah. Jeez, I guess they get worn down, so if you're getting, you need like a plant clothes or something where they're getting rid of the big ones, because as they wear down, they give you the little ones, right? Years ago, I was able to get two five, two four, two three for like 70 bucks shipped or something. They put it in a five gallon pail and mailed it from somewhere, but the company that was doing that quit. Yeah. Do it anymore, or they're gone now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've done in the past really dumb things like just dish very heavy sheet to a gentle radius and then weld in heavy webbing and things like that. It's a bit of a pain, but it doesn't work too badly, really. Anybody that's watching was feeling generous. That's very hard for our purposes. It's very nice though. You don't have to worry about denting them. It. Yeah. it sucks to clean them up on the initial because they're pretty rough when you get them. Yeah. Or at least ones I did. Whoa. How much do you think it would cost for a seven inch loose ball bearing? I'm talking to the commenters. I forget the inside dimensions of my gas forge, but I do have a coal forge, so I could get some weird stuff in there. Or I could just keep on living my life and not worry about it. Huh, I should look into that. I have a little argon tank that I could cut up that's strapped. What? Go. I'm not part of this conversation. No. Okay. I'll let you know when you when you're needed. No, it's okay. I'm just here. It's okay. I saw a five inch half ball on Marketplace the other day, but obviously someone bought it immediately. 50 bucks. That would work. Or I could get my team of strikers together and just upset a four inch round stock into whatever we can get. <laughs> Yeah, I have a section of maybe like a lighter rail track that I've been meaning to turn into a tea steak for years, but I've never really had the time. Well, yes, you could do that. But what fun would that be? No one likes to grind. <laughs> True. Sometimes making the tool is as much fun as making the armor. That's my problem. That's why I never make any armor. Yeah, he started a little bit here, just kind of as a reference. just by whacking the whole helmet skull down onto a cresting stake. He says it was gentle. I thought it was terrifying. Oh, five inch loose ball bearing for a buck 35. That's not bad at all. What? How big? Five inch? Yeah. 
135. 135? Oh. Not bad, eh? Sounds really bad to me. I don't want to spend $135 on a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> not a lot of that around where I am. Coming along, eh? 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 Hey, is that still a Canadian stereotype? How are you now? Oh, that sounds handy. I think the biggest I've got is two and a quarter round 4140. Three inch square is a lot bigger than that. Back. Yeah. Ooh, a little fresh air, that's nice. Oh, it's nice and cool out here. Whoa, that's a lot of feet of that. What were you gonna do with all that heavy bar stock? Make tools, I guess. Seem very different from when you left? No. Patrick is a real machine. Yeah, look at him go. It's been... It's just about six and a half hours that he's been going. Well, half hour talking to the beginning, about six solid hours of straight hammering. Maybe 15 minutes for pizza. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's uh, specific to raising either. Just the machine overall. Yeah, I don't know what the turnover rate is like. We're at 21 right now. Yeah, Wade, this is the end of a 60-hour work week of doing brass, so. Yesterday. Yeah, a lot of hand sanding, which is not that easy. It's not that relaxing. <laughs> Yeah, there was many hours of that yesterday. JM is still here. You've been here the whole time, eh? Yeah. 
there. GM is still there. Yeah, he's still here. Oh. He's a trooper. Yep. Yeah, how much attention are you paying? <laughs> to be fair, I'm paying a medium amount of attention at this point. I'd be paying less attention if Wade didn't keep telling me to put the camera back on you. can watch the live stream in the background of the live stream. The slight delay. I don't know if you can make out the live stream in the background of the live stream of the live stream though. Okay, so some people have been here since the start. Yeah, that pulled in pretty good, eh? Watch your 4-4. 